the team's here, so please don't touch any of the, or lift the blue curtain. Thank you very much. Um, we will call the meeting of the Planning Commission for Monday, August 1st to order. Can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance. Uh, roll call, please. President Zenek. Here. No, uh, Vice President Cummins. Present. Secretary Laurent. Here. C Commissioner Lamb. Here. Commissioner Sable. Here. Commissioner Smith. Here. Commissioner Van Portfleet. Here. And Commissioner Reard requested to be excused. We you have a quorum. Thank you. Do we have a any type of motion to accept the approval of agenda? So moved. Second. Any support? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, carries. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes from our Planning Commission meeting of June 6, so 2022? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. So obviously, Everyone's here regarding, I would assume, regarding the Mo Cherry development. And contrary to Facebook and what was put out, the public hearing is not scheduled for tonight. But we feel that it's very important. This is our community. We all live in this community and we all wanna hear your voice. So if you choose, because it's not on the agenda for tonight, this is the time that we can take public comments on non-agenda items. We will, later in this meeting, be setting a public hearing for these developments, but that public hearing is not tonight. But you can speak if you choose to. You have a three-minute time limit. You can come once up to the podium. We ask that you state your name and your address. If anyone would like to speak tonight regarding this, we're, we absolutely would love to hear from you. So, Mr. Mosseri, if you wouldn't mind, please, if, if these are... Well, it's like not on the speech. Okay. If I may... Well, well, yeah, I don't think we can take you as a, as a public comment regarding... It's... Well, I want to be on any of the lines. Promise, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Yeah. Three minutes, please. If I may, if I could face the audience. Oh. Uh, this is what a great community is. It's concern for the community that you raise your families in, you reside in, and want to continue to be in, to uh, age in place also. So all I have to say is thank you, because your concerns are valid, and we're going to address those concerns at a later time. But thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, for this moment. Thank you. So would anyone like to speak, please? Non-agenda items. Non-agenda items. Correct. Uh, this is just the question I had. Is, name. from the way I understand. I'm sorry, your, your name, name and address, Oh, I'm please. sorry. My name is Jeff Siner, 416 Lake Street. And um, I do, is, do I understand it correctly then tonight you are going to address the rezoning of the two locations in question here? Regarding the most serious developments? Yes. We will be talking about them, but we are not having a public hearing regarding the most serious. And you're welcome to stay and listen to that discussion. Oh, I definitely will. But what, what I don't understand is on July 8th, you published a notice of public hearing for tonight for these particular issues. Why did that evaporate? So, to my understanding, that was an error. We said, I understand. So, let, let, me, let me please say this, because we live in your community, you're my neighbor. So, this is what I'm being told. This is what we, why we gather, why I, I'm grateful that everyone is here 
because this is what we do this for. We do this to protect our community, and I'm glad that you guys are all here. So that's what I was told. I see on Facebook that there's a public hearing tonight, and I'm looking at my agenda packet, and there is no public hearing for the Mosseri development projects. There is a public hearing tonight regarding revised text amendments regarding boat hoists and boat houses. So when I see it on Facebook that this is published, I'm just as surprised as you are. I'm the chairman of, the, of this commission, and I don't know. But it was published in the review and on your website. I yeah. mean, it was I, like, I, how, do you make, how do you make that kind of error? I, I can, I, all I can say is, I'm sorry, I don't know. I don't do the publishing. I will investigate it to find out what happened. But that's what I was told. And I can tell you, there's no shady deal going on. Or, I, this is the agenda that I'm given, that every one of these commission members are delivered, and we look at it and we assess what we're given. So no. I know, I know that was said. I was completely shocked by that, and it comes across as, oh, we're hiding something, and we're, we're not. I can tell you. Well, you may not be, but well, I can tell you. As far as the commissioners this, are going, this commission may, yeah. may not be aware of it, but somehow somebody took it off the Which agenda is, miraculously. I just again, th thank yeah, you. Okay. But I'm, but that's why I'm glad everyone's here, and that's why we're here. So thank you very much. My name is Harry Steven, and I live at 311 North Shore, and some of you know me, Jim, and others around here. I was a village councilman for 10 years, a village president for a number of years. Uh, I'm addressing this. Could you please talk into the mic, Harry? Thank you. I'm going to eat it soon. <laughs> the reason that I'm talking is that the taxes that are going to be collected by the new developments that are coming into the community, the Moseries, the West Development, and others that are going in are all in a special district which collects the taxes that are incrementally increasing. So I would prefer to see the taxes that these entities, if they do come in, I would like to see them go to the village of Lake Orion for the general purpose of operating the village as opposed to the special interest of the downtown development district, which is a special district. I have petitions with me. I will not solicit here, but I and others will be outside. And what we are wanting to do is to put this issue onto the ballot in November, and that's what these petitions are for, is to try to direct that the income or the taxes that developers are paying will go to the operation of the village of Lake Orion as opposed to a special interest group called the DDA. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Sean Maycheck, 36 Highland Avenue, Lake Orion. I just want to know who's responsible for the management of the agenda. If you look at the attendance here, we were all reading a document that was published, not a fictitious Facebook scam. And myself, as well as I'm sure many other of the people in the community have re redone their schedules. Me, personally and professionally, made changes to my professional schedule to accommodate this meeting. Who's going to take ownership of what's published and what you're tying this uh, community's time up for? Please, tell me. Enlighten us. Well, first off, thank you. I will look into it. I canceled a vacation two weeks ago to attend a meeting that was, that was canceled. So I'm just as upset as you are. But I don't have your answer for you, but I'll look into it. Ken, who's, who's responsible? <laughs> this is silly. They do not know, and this is, you're elected officials. You, you, you're here to represent us. Excuse me. And not to know is, no, I'm, I'm still talking, thank you. Elected, voted on, volunteered, 
That's fine. I do the same thing. I'm on the board of directors of many companies. So, Ken, please enlighten us. I would just like to say I chair other meetings. Comments are directed to the chair. The chair is the master of this ceremony right now, of this discussion, and I defer to him as he has responded. And, and I answered you as truthfully and as honestly as I can. And, and, and just to confirm, I am not elected. And that's fine. But you're up here doing a job for this community. So would you like me to make something up or tell you the truth? No, I'd like to, can you tell then us I, when we'll find you, out? Then I told you the truth. I'll yes, you did. I appreciate that That's and we all, all do. do. When can we find out who's responsible for the publication of the minutes so we don't have this debacle again? Thank you. Th thank, thank you very much. And, and I will point out, I did check the agenda that was on the website and it does not list a public hearing regarding any most area development today. So, so thank you very much. Maybe that's where the problem is. Whoever's running the website is maybe putting up documents they shouldn't be putting up. I don't know, I don't know. Listen, I'm sorry. So I'm sorry, I don't have that answer. I will investigate. That's all I can say. Sir. Hi. My name's Art Watson. I live at 16 North Shore Drive. And my question really is, is where did I screw up? How did I let this get so far? And the people that I talked to in my subdivision when I went around, how did we get to this point of this building and us know almost nothing about it? But when it comes to voting and vote machines, I read it in the paper all over the place. I just don't understand why we're not putting something as big as this on the, in the review, wherever, in the front page so we all know about it. I'll admit, maybe I'm slow, but everybody I talk to must be slow too. The only ones that seem to be fast is here. We're all just finding out about this a couple weeks ago and we're talking about is it on an agenda or isn't it on an agenda. However that happened, it happened. The bottom line is, is we should have known about it a, a heck of a lot sooner than we do now. We are affecting our neighborhood. We are affecting the traffic. We are affecting people's lives. And that's all I want to know is, what do I do to make sure that no more information gets past me? Where did I screw up? It's a question, which means there should be an answer. All right, thank you. I didn't want to thank you, I wanted an answer. Well, okay, so. I, I asked the question. Thanks. This the question is, was is it for an answer. So, so understand, this is public comments, so we are happy to listen to you. It's not a question and answer period. So I don't have answers, I wish I had answers. I can't, you know, I can't say your question was where did you screw up? You can't ask me that. Oh, yeah, no I, I, can. For that. I can ask everybody why I didn't know about it. I can ask why it wasn't in the front line of the paper. I can ask about it, why it wasn't all over. Why everybody else didn't know. I can ask that. I have the right to ask it. I have the right to get an answer for it. Now, the answer I may not want to hear, but my God, I deserve the answer. And that's all I'm asking for. And I don't think you guys are ready to give us any answers. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Adam Fodor. live at 33 North Axford in the village. Um, a few questions. I assume if you're going to allow one person or one developer to buy almost an entire strip of M24 from Flint Street to Lake Street all the way down M24 minus a few personal residents and a few commercial businesses and then around the corner in including Snug Harbor. I assume that that person or that developer is going to pay for an impact study on the lake, 
traffic, because traffic is a joke. And every time they try to make traffic better, they make it worse, okay? It's a five minute light, north and south. At Flint Street, it is one minute. If you're trying to go north on 24 or south in the morning or in the evening. The traffic situation in Lake Orion is horrible. I've lived here 40 years. It's been horrible from when I was a kid to today, and it's only gonna get worse if you build a 40 unit apartment complex or condos or whatever the heck they wanna change the name to. They keep changing it because they're trying to find that loophole and you guys are gonna green light. Lately, the village, every decision they've made has led this, town, this village from bad to worse. Stop trying to make the village of Lake Orion, where living is a vacation, downtown Royal Oak. It's ridiculous. You're not gonna be able to see the lake if you build condos every 90 feet. You're not gonna, you might as well cancel the fireworks because you're not gonna see the fireworks with four-story condos all the way down the road. All the people that live on Flint Street that have had lake views with the marina and had to look over boats for 40 years are gonna lose that. But you guys don't care anything about dollars and cents. That's it, and it's a joke. And everybody in this room is upset. And you're just going, oh, well, we made a mistake, and nobody knows what did it, and we're going to look, you're not going to look into anything, because you guys don't ever look into anything. It's whatever the village wants to do, and that's it. And you, you guys are wasting every person in this room's time that rearranged their schedules to come here, and the answer is, we'll look into it, and we're, we're glad you came, and thank you for talking. It's a joke. Thank you. Uh, Larry Lefkoff, 463 Algene Street. Um, reiterate some of those comments. Um, and I think what's, what's most important to me is those comments are very valid and communication issues aside, we get behind that. Um, go forward and accept what the, the citizens here are most concerned with. And it's traffic on the roads and it's traffic on the lake. And so it's important, I think, to all of us that we stay focused on how these developments will impact both of those things and how we can understand it, address it, and enforce the things that are in place to keep traffic at a reasonable level for the density of the population that we have here today. It may not all be on the Planning Commission, but it may be a, an issue of enforcing what's already there with the number of boats that are out on the lake today. Because the traffic out there is unacceptable on weekends. Thank you. Uh, Ryan Curtis, 302 North North Shore. I have to say something that that gentleman's correct about. The traffic on the lake is absolutely atrocious. People don't follow the laws anymore. They don't go counterclockwise. They cut across. They're shooting this way. Half of them are clearly drunk off their asses. Excuse, excuse my French. But the problem that we have in this village is that we're overgrowing what we are. We're getting too big for our britches. Four-story buildings here, four-story buildings here. The one that they put on the point across from the American Legion, can't remember the name of it, but it's architecturally hideous. This town used to be late 1800s, early 1900s architecture. It was quiet, grew up here my whole life. Since Detroit imploded in the 80s, since Chrysler came out here, it just grew and it grew and it grew and there's been no actual planned Development. They went through the M24, spent how much money on M24 going down it in the last few years? Traffic studies this, traffic studies that. It's still two lanes all the way to I-75. We're lucky we have the pandemic to stop traffic. It's been horrible, and people don't care. They drive blindly. They try to run you over. They drive up your... It's horrible. I live on North Shore. People do 40 miles an hour down a two-lane stretch. No one pays attention to anything except themselves. And that's where Lake Orion is headed. We have all this development going on. And if you walk over and look over the bridge, over Paint Creek and downtown Orion, there's a tree growing out of it. 
the foundation of the bridge in the village, a tree is growing out of it, and no one in the village has stopped to notice that. But as a person that has built plenty of things in my life, I can see, well, there's going to be thousands of dollars in replacement here in a few years. And Chuck is right about the DDA. The DDA absorbs tons of our money that we need for the roads around the village. I mean, Central, that was horrible for years. There's, there's sewage, they're doing all this development. It used to all back up around Bland Sims. All those neighborhoods used to get flooded. It's just, come on guys, we aren't Royal Oak. We aren't Rochester, we're Lake Orion. Many of us grew up here. We like our village, we like our lake. I've had people come internationally here, famous people that were like, whoa, this place is absolutely amazing. And I said, you know what the shame of is? People want to kill it. They want to ruin what makes America beautiful. And that's it. Your quaint lake communities are very beautiful. We're going to have nothing in 10 years but four-story buildings through this whole village. Each time one of those historic buildings reaches the decay, falls down, we're going to have another four-story building. Look what happened to the wagon wheel, that structure, the old movie theater used to be. It just sat there. It knew it was going. It knew it needs structural work done to it, but it was sat there, sat there, and allowed to decay, and the roof crumbled in, and look what we have there. We have a huge four-story building. That was not Lake Orion. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Dave Hicks. I live at 176 West Flint. Um, I moved in in 2002, so I've been there 20 years. Can't even believe it. Um, it's a little more personal for me. I just want to say when I, I got no, I had no friend named Jim Bushman. He was kind of one of the old town fathers, um, and he told me when I bought my house that the, when it was built in 1930, it was a Sears home, and some people of some import lived there. Uh, the Lyprant family. And the muffler man didn't used to be there, so my property would go all the way back to M24, I guess, back then. So back then in 1930, they didn't have sliding glass doors and they didn't have TV. People sat on their front porch and a lady walked back and forth and talked, and that was the internet back then. And uh, they didn't have TV, you know, so they sat on the porch and they watched the lake. So for 20 years, I've known that the value of my house is sitting on that porch and seeing the lake. And I think that's, I mean, it's funny because I just looked at this, you know. I've talked to different people and in here it says um, they actually advertise as a benefit of the things that they're offering, these residences, um, open view to water. So can they take mine to give it to someone else? It's part of the value of my house, you know, so it's an intrinsic part of the value and I just, doesn't really seem fair. I mean, I understand you can't stop progress, but I am definitely a squeaky wheel. Hi, my name is Tom Patterson. I live at 65 North North Shore here in the village. And uh, there are several concerns that I've got here. And first of all is the lack of or information we're getting on all of this thing. I am not for or against uh, the, the uh, complex being built here. I don't know enough about it at this stage of the game. I've read and listened to the Mocheri uh, presentation. Sounds awful good. But one thing I would like to say on this thing is there's a lot of money flowing to and fro from the Mocheri organization to residents of Lake Orion such as Ken Van Fortfleet, and I would ask that they recuse themselves from any vote that would happen on this project one way or another. Thank you. Hello, um, I'm Jody Hand. I live at 467 Algene Street, um, and I, I will reiterate a lot of what some other people have said. Um, I can tell you that one of the reasons I selected the house that I did is because it's on a very quiet, nice bay. The traffic, I agree, on the weekends is insane, and having that nice, quiet bay allows me a place to actually go out and enjoy the lake. 
Adding 30 some odd docks is gonna take away that bay from me and the residents surrounding me. And I've read through this, um, one of the things they said in here is in that bay, they plan no additional docks, but I can count how many they have on their plan and it's a lot more than what is presently out in the lake. I kayak that bay all the time and I can tell you exactly where all of those docks are. So um, I don't believe there are no additional docks. In addition to that, I agree that this is a nice, quiet community. I would like to keep it that way. It's one of the reasons that I selected Lake Orion to live in. I am also concerned about the increase in day in docks and population on the lake and want to know, did anybody actually do studies? Because I believe that square footage of lakefront versus how many docks and boats on there, there is a requirement that has to be at a certain level or below to be a public lake. Based on my calculations, the amount of docks that I added turns this into a private lake, which is going to make all kinds of additional issues for the people that live in this community. And so I would like to see all of that addressed before we go to any kind of public hearing, because I think that's gonna be a big issue. My name is Lori Pesci. I live at 95 North Axford. We all appreciate the huge responsibility this commission has in making decisions on how our beloved community of Lake Orion is developed or not developed. And whenever I attend these meetings, I'm told that you want our input. So you have it. So I know we're concerned when I talk to my neighbors, like with the sewers, you know, water pressure, water runoff, you know, you've already heard traffic. There's so much infrastructure that would be impacted that I think still needs work, if I'm correct. The, you know, lowering of the lake is an issue now, right? Because there needs to be some repairs in the sewers. So. I'm back. Um, you know, just, li just listen. Well, first of all, I want to say to this community, thank you for the support of trying to preserve our neighborhood. Because if we don't speak out, we're not heard. We've seen that in the past. And this is quite impressive. And I hope that we all send this message to the village. But, um, you know, just hearing about this, and I, I, I was going to speak and rep, to represent, since I drew the short straw, for the Payne Axford area. Um, so I had a bunch of bullet items. Most of that's been hit. Uh, there's a lot of concerns you can see, and I, I hope that this message is being taken seriously and getting back to the council and get, you know, this is not just a, uh, a light a five foot variance for a garage, okay? This is a, a neighborhood that you're affecting, not just a neighbor. And, um, you know, one thing I just did think of is too is like, do we need more residents? Is the village lacking residency? Because uh, I don't see that. And you're adding 92 more families. All right, taking commercial property, commercial property gives something of benefit to the residents, right? Services, whatever it be, restaurants. I, residential zoning doesn't give us anything other than from what we're hearing, a big headache. And uh, the whole point of this was a zoning change. I didn't want, I, I, the, our, the developer, Excellent developers. I've heard nothing but positive stuff. I, I, I don't question it. I don't care if it's Moses, you know. Um, it's not the point. The point is changing it from commercial to residential. We don't need, because we're, we're already diluted you know, I, I, with, with, with free space in this village. I mean, I, everything's occupied with residents. That's a good thing, and it's worked for decades. Why do we have to add more and stack them on top of each other? 
I, I don't see where that's a priority. And they don't give us any benefit. When you take commercial and move it over to residential, there's no benefit in that property for the residents anymore, like I say. So we just give it up, you know, and deal with it. Um, I, uh, you know, and then on top of it, we're giving up a couple businesses there. Rod's Interiors, we're, you know, pushing him out. <clears throat> Reva with the Lake Orion Historical Tours. If you ever go, it's great. She does, you'll learn more about this community than you probably ever have. Well, what, we're gonna just throw them out? Oh, they're valuable. Those people are valuable. One of the proposals, has, is, has this village gone out and solicited it all in the state or out of state for marine companies, marina companies? I know Tommy's was in here last year, we were all applauding and then that deal fell through. But you know, there's a lot of marinas around this country and there's a lot of people that like to invest in marinas. All right, your time's up, thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Other things to consider. Thank you. Well, Hello, Scott Gabriel, 941 Joslin. It is the township. It's uh, an old 1827 house, so all of y'all built after us, just so you know. Uh, before that, we lived on Bellevue Island. My wife and I are scuba divers, her through the Sheriff's Department. We have over 200 combined dives in this lake over the last 25 years. I can tell you, the condition of the water, the condition of the uh, lake bed is in trouble. There are oil gobules down there that look like the Exxon Valdez from all the boats. Now changing it from two cycle to single helps, but there is a lot of junk. I can tell you exactly uh, where all the anchors are but when you go out for the fireworks. I've collected over 100 of them, usually with a, a new rope that's not tied on. And <laughs> consider that. Even with the marina comment, that kind of business, a marina, adds a lot of incidental pollution. So just consider the pollution of the lake and the, the uh, way it was. When we first started diving, there were musky in this lake. Big six foot musky. Haven't seen those in years. We're losing the bluegills. We're losing some of the more sensitive trout. Just consider the lake. Good evening, Michelle Duma, 95 North North Shore Drive. Um, so a lot of my neighbors have already hit upon some of the key points, uh, taxes, enforcement of any rules that we have. Uh, and the other thing that my uncle Art brought up was communication. Uh, while I appreciate the literature that's been shared with us today, and I also ask you guys as a zoning uh, commission, is to please understand the details. Uh, we keep talking in terms of generalities of no more extra docks. I'm really interested in number of boat spaces that it's gonna be taking up, number of parking places, number of residents, the actual data that's actually going to impact our living conditions in the conditions of the lake. And if we could just make an effort or somehow communicate to us where that could all be shared, uh, I would appreciate it, because that's really gonna help make, when we do have the open commentary, something more valuable for us to speak about. So thank you, thanks. Yeah. Rebecca Creamer, 228 Lake Street. We are on the cusp of this new development at the marina, basically. Been there 12 years. We're sitting on a home that basically, we don't know what to do at this point. Are we selling or is someone gonna knock on my door and say, hey, we wanna buy your home for a fraction of the price. What are we doing? This is, this is all of us. This isn't just us, this is all of us as a community. Why? Thank you. Um, my name is Kathy Leach, 120 Clare Street, mm -hmm. on the corner of Lake and Clare. Um, I found about, out about this development from a friend of mine that owns another marina, not in, in Waterford. And I'm just amazed that I had to find out about this new development from him. My concern is water runoff, 
where my house sits, Clare Street runs into the lake. There's one drainage basin there. It has flooded numerous times. The village has actually had to pay me back for remedial, you know, fixes on my house. So now you're just going to, and of course, you know, the way Lake Street goes, it goes downhill once you get to the end of it. You know, I'm concerned about what's going to happen and nobody told us and, you know, what are we going to learn from this meeting tonight? Is there anything we can do? You know, how are you going to take care of us that live in that neighborhood? There is, at the end of Lake Street, there is a, well, a launch. Now it's pretty broken down, but it's for a homeowners association there in our neighborhood. Is that going to be open to the 80 new people, you know, that are moving in? I mean, we don't know anything about it. Like you say, I heard from a marina owner in Waterford that this was happening. So I'm concerned that we're not going to find out what's going to happen until it's way too late. So, here we go. Yeah, good evening. Hans Creamer, uh, 228 Lake Street as well. Uh, my wife just spoke not too long ago, a couple people ago. Um, we do have some concerns about, concerns about the new development that really kind of directly does affect us on Lake Street. Um, I know there's a couple uh, parcels, 187 at the end of Lake Street in Flint, um, supposedly has an offer for the new development for Mosheri Buildings. Um, we're only about four houses west of that on Lake Street, and we're a stone throw from the marina. Um, we've been there 12 years. I grew up in Lake Orion. I moved out here in 76, went to Blanche, Him Blanche Sims in elementary school, uh, was out in Lake Orion, Lake Orion resident until about 87, and we moved back here about 12 years ago. So there's, this town has a special place in my heart, and I think a lot of people here as well that's been here for decades, and we like to see change. We need change, right? But not this sort of change and not this quickly. There's been so much new development in the city, bringing in revenue, which is great, but it's the residency and the quaint village feel that everybody has and wants to keep within Lake Orion Village. And again, our concern is really our location, how this is gonna affect us, um, our value of our home that's gone up in the last 12 years considerably and how this new big development, which I know Mosheri builds beautiful stuff, high-end stuff, but how is that gonna affect the value of our home and the other homes on Lake Street and Flint Street and in the village itself? Um, that's our concern, and against the transparency that you see all these people here, um, obviously we've got all the same information from the same location, whether that's Facebook, uh, the Lake Orion Review, which I thought was a credible site, which is where I got my two articles of, I guess, th this whole agenda here. Um, so where do we get, Mike, one question to you, is where do we get, where's a credible source of information that we can all use moving forward with what's going on in the village? Do you have an answer I, for that? Or? I, honestly, I thought the website was the credible source. And as the commissioner, I go to that website. I looked at the website, gentleman back there looks at the website, says they're two different things. Yep. I, so I would like to get an answer also. That'd be great, I think we all deserve an answer. I, I'm a fellow citizen, I'm yep. your neighbor also. Yeah. I'd like to get an answer. Okay, we all deserve Thank an you. answer, I right? Thank you very Thank much. You. My name is Bonnie Blaze and I reside, hi Jim, <laughs> I reside at 223 O'Connor and last summer I purchased two cottages on Lake Orion which I have been fixing up. Um, they were dilapidated. Um, I used to own a business downtown in Lake Orion. I also renovated that building. So I've had a huge part in the growth of downtown Lake Orion. I did all the graphics when they did the streetscape. Um, I've lived in the village for 20 years, had a business here, know a lot of people here, support the businesses here. Um, I wanna speak on behalf of the um, 
what's going on in the village and how it is, you see, affecting all these people that have lived here for a long time. My friend Reva, who um, is very invested in this community, you know, has been bumped from her spot. We continue to kind of, I think, negate what our community is about, which is vacationing, the small family community. Um, some of you may know I run a rental on the lake, and I've gotten nothing but a hassle from the village regarding having a one small rental on the lake, but they're willing to bring in these huge developments, which makes absolutely no flipping sense. And the village police have been at my door because of a neighbor who built a mansion on Bellevue calling on me every day because I have families coming in to town this week for the Lake Orion reunion. And I get nothing but hell from the village. But yet they're entertaining this. And I'll tell everyone in here, this has been in the works for a long time. Thank you. How you doing? Uh, Gasper Vitale, 320 Park Island. So I'm a new resident to Lake Orion, been here just over a year. Um, I also have concerns, just like everyone in the room, regarding traffic, uh, the quantity of boats on the lake. Um, I am pro uh, the development. I, um, one of the things that I don't like seeing is all the homes that, or buildings that are abandoned or the older buildings that are, there's a lot of rental people coming through, and um, I don't think it shows well for the community. Uh, so I think Mosheri is um, a top-notch company uh, that uh, has proven itself in Michigan for several years, and if you want anyone to do any kind of development there or invest the money they're investing, that's the company you want. So, um, uh, like everyone, the traffic, I think, is huge. The boating is huge. But they will add value to all the residents in the area, and they will build a product probably that no other developer is going to do. So. OK, thanks. Bill Raymore, 217 Park Island. Um, so that view is an interesting view. Um, I don't think, no, no, I think it is. I don't think this is the answer. I don't think this is what we want. But you do have a top-notch co notch company here, and you have an opportunity to develop three key places on the lake. And I think with the, the right, I'll say, style or, or, uh, or just something that actually goes with, uh, with the community, it could be a good thing. This is not a good thing. But it could be with the right, with the right input. And I'm, I'm wondering, is this a scenario where we just need to pull together the right ideas and the right vision and do something that's really good, as opposed to, I mean, this just doesn't fit. I mean, it's, I know it's top notch, and I know you do great work, but it's just not this. It's not for this community. That's my thought. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kirsten Barber. I live at 441 Newton Drive. I've owned my home with my husband for 14 years. When we moved here, we had one child. I loved having Atwater Park at the end of my street. I loved the idea of taking my kids there. I have five kids now, and I cannot trust my 12-year-old daughter to take my younger children to the park because of the traffic on Atwater. I looked at the agenda tonight, the agenda that was posted online. I looked at the packet. I looked at the traffic studies, and I saw, and I could have told you without looking at these studies, I could have told you that there was a failing grade at Atwater in 24. I deal with that intersection multiple times a day, and I can't tell you how many times I've sat there, timed the lights, sat on Atwater, trying to head southbound on 24 for over a minute while 24 traffic north and southbound is going. Couldn't tell you how many times I've sat through that light three times with six cars in front of me because the light is timed so horribly. I realize that's not a village thing, that's an MDOT thing. But the solution, I'm sorry, the explanation for the traffic study is we will do, um, we're gonna study these intersections and make sure that they are the same 
um, but not worse than they already are. I don't understand how you can add 90-some families to this area and not negatively impact M24 and Atwater's intersection, 24 in Oneida, 24 in Heights. How many accidents a week happen in front of McDonald's? Starbucks. 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 Hello. Thank you for that addition. But, and I understand that's just on the border. However, when I moved into my house, we had the second largest property on our street. We still do. However, two lots over was split and two houses over 1,600 square feet were added onto maybe 0.6 acres. We used to see deer running through the backyard every day. We've seen fox, we've seen skunks, we've seen groundhogs. I loved showing my kids that. Hey, look out the back window, there's a mama deer and her babies. Look how cute they are, aren't they sweet? Haven't seen them in a year. What do you think that's gonna do to the other wildlife that's around the area? My kids like walking down Atwater and having a glimpse of the lake. What do you think that Mosheri's gonna do with these buildings? We're not gonna have that. I've got a friend that lives on Lake Street. We go to her house to see the 4th of July fireworks. Well, a couple years ago, a mansion was built across the street from her where we used to have a wonderful view of the fireworks. Not anymore. You're destroying this town. You're destroying this, I'm sorry, this village. Before I came here, I looked up on dictionary.com, merriamwebster.com, nationalgeographic.com, definition of a village. A small community in a rural area. Rural meaning relating to or characteristic of the country. We're not in the country. Everyone here can tell you that. This isn't small, this isn't rural anymore. This is turning into an urban place, which isn't a bad thing, but the definition of urban is concerned with um, or densely populated area. We are very heavily densely populated. National Geographic says a village is having between 500 and 2,500 inhabitants. We're well over that number. But by all means, let's add more. Let's add more tax dollars to the village. To do what with? Raise my water rates? Because the sewers haven't been updated in 20 years. A couple years ago when I asked why my water bill went up by, you know, 100%. Well, there's infrastructure that needs to be done. We haven't raised the rates in 20 years. That's not my problem. Should have done it 20 years ago. You are out pricing families, young families, current families by doing this. You're not taking care of the pump houses on the lake. Who's gonna pay for that? The lakefront homeowners? Probably not. You guys gotta stop. Now, I will tell you, if I had a choice between Mosheri and Pulte, I'll pick Mosheri any day. I hate Pulte. Lived in a Pulte home when I was younger. Place fell apart, my parents hated it. However, this is not the solution for a small, quaint village with M24 that cannot handle the traffic, that cannot be widened to accommodate the additional families with the ones currently here already in trouble. Wrong answer, guys. Fix it. Thank you. Hi, my name is Heather McCoy, and I live at uh, 437 East Flint Street. And uh, sorry, I usually have a big mouth. <laughs> my name is Heather McCoy, and I live at 437 East Flint Street. And I feel like I bring a unique perspective, uh, as we've only been living there two months. And uh, I have to tell you that one of the draws to moving here was the beautiful lake and the green space and the walkability and the cycleability. And I am concerned that after just moving in, you guys are gonna take that away from me. I'm going to lose the ability to take my daughter to see the fireworks um, because it's gonna be blocked. And I'm also concerned about the traffic. I'm not gonna be able to walk to the to the beach or to the park with my daughter without risking our lives. And um, also I'm, in, I'm really concerned about the environmental impact to the lake. The lake is a gem. We should protect it and treat it as such. That's all. Yep. Hi, 
I'm Elena Mitchell. This is my daughter, Violet Mitchell. Uh, we live at 318 Lake Street. And I just want to say, I've been in Lake Orion my entire life. I've moved, lived in a few different areas of Lake Orion. Um, and where I'm at now, right in the town, is is beautiful. It's my favorite. It, it really is, and it's very quiet. We have a nice street right there on Lake Street. It's everyone knows everyone, and um, it, it's ju it's it's just very nice. And I just have this feeling: if you bring in this big giant building with all these new families, this street's going to become a parking lot for their friends that want to come in and hang out on the lake, and. We're going to be constantly <laughs> trying to, you know, park our cars and move our people and what's happening here. And, I mean, there's already such little parking in this town that we had to park a mile over street over just to come here. And um, I guess my concerns are the same as everyone else's. It's already overcrowded in the village, and I would like to see it stay a nice, quiet area where vacation, where living is a vacation. Um, I'd also like to add that I didn't even see a Facebook anything. I got a letter in the mail, and that's how I'm here tonight. So there's been a few different ways that tonight was heard about about the the infrastructure going in. Um, so I don't know what happened where, but we're all here just to express our concerns. So thank you for listening to all of us. Thank you. Harry Stephen, another trip to the microphone. This lake, which, by the way, this is called Lake Orion. It is because of the lake that we are mostly here. The lake used to be a vacation or a cottage lake. And until 1960, there were septic tanks that went all around the lake. Had there not been the wisdom to put sewers around the lake, that lake would be green, mucky, terrible place. Those sewers were put in approximately 60 some odd years ago. And excuse my language, but poo doesn't go uphill. So we have over 20 pumping stations around the lake to take and move discharge, I'll use the word this time, uphill and to get rid of it. Unfortunately, those pumps that do that are old and consequently are going to have to be replaced. And the estimates go for between six and $12 million to do that. That's infrastructure that is required to protect our lake. If those pumps do fail, the potential of a problem in the lake is significant. So as you do your negotiations with Mosheri, Keep in mind that infrastructure is critical for this, not necessarily their immediate area, but for the whole benefit of the village, namely for the asset, the lake. Thank you. My name is Nicole Desmond. I'm at 33 North Axford Street. Uh, I moved here seven years ago. I moved here from the southern suburbs of Detroit, um, a place where you had to lock your cars, had to lock your doors. When I moved to Lake Orion, it felt like this quaint, small village. It had this beautiful little historic downtown. And little by little, the last seven years, I have watched the Planning Commission chip away at that small town beauty and try to turn this village into something that it shouldn't be. Putting this development at the corner of my neighborhood is going to further, like everyone has said, cause traffic. It's going to further create congestion. It takes me almost 30 to 40 minutes to get from 75 to my home in the village on the way home from work which is too long. It makes living here undesirable. In the last week, turning left from M24 onto Flint Street, I have been almost hit when I have the green light by southbound traffic who don't understand and they're not paying attention because they're just trying to get through it and they're sick of sitting in it. And then on top of it, you're gonna add all of these people, all of these cars, 
on top of what you've already added in downtown. Our police department is not keeping up with it. My car was broken into a couple years ago right in my driveway. Instead of doing something to fix the problem, they, have, they told me it was my fault because my car was unlocked. When you add more people to downtown, it's going to further create problems. You keep bringing in more bars and it's creating more problems, more situations. I'm, a, I'm unhappy that I'm seeing the small town feel go away. That is, when I moved here, I felt like I had finally arrived at somewhere comfortable. And it's, it doesn't have that feeling anymore. I'm sorry, I don't mean that. First of all, I'd like to apologize for the first time. Watson, 16 Nosher Drive. Apologize for the last time. I was being a little bit of a jerk, and I didn't mean to by applying that. But I want you to realize, and I don't know, I'm thinking I'm talking for some of the people here, if not the majority. I hear this, you know, how you're going to increase the value of the house. Unfortunately, um, my house has been in my family since 1935. Uh, my grandfather lived there, my dad lived there, I lived there, my daughter will live there, and God hopes my great-grandson will live there. So, But he can't live there in a town like this because I wouldn't want him to. I've never in my, if you would explain this whole thing that was going on, I had to do something that I never would have thought I'd ever do in a million years. I checked with the realtor to see how much my property was worth. Because I won't live next to this. You, you, I can't stop you from building it, but I can stop me from having to live next to it. That I can do. And I thank you for your time. And none of these comments that I think any of these people are making are making towards you, or you or you. It's towards your position, but not towards you. <laughs> so, thank okay, you. thank you. Hi, I'm Wendy Maycheck. I'm at 36 Highland Avenue. Um, I feel really bad for Susan, who is the person who mailed out the letter, saying, because apparently she'll probably be getting a little bit of an earful. Um, but. One of my biggest concerns, again, is going to be the traffic on the lake. And I've brought that up at other meetings. And what the response I constantly get is, that is not us, that's the DNR. So if we're allowing another 50 to 100 boats on the lake, you're also going to be displacing approximately 47 boats that are at the marina. When you displace those, where are they going to go? Because it's not fair to those people to just be like, oh, you no longer have a place here, so then are you gonna allow more keyholing in that, or do we have to go and then have another fight with the DNR on how many boats people can have, how many new docks are coming in, and you're also losing revenue on the keyholing as a village when people are just collecting cash in for somebody to dock their boat at their house. That's another revenue you could go after. So just wondering if anybody has thought about any of that. Carolyn Duma, 45 North Shore. Mine is off the subject. It's the marina that we have there by Pelton's Point. And I think that's why this worries me. That just appeared one day. No one ever had a meeting that we all came to. And when I asked the village, they said that was the DNR. They did not know that that was going in. Too. And then it, in, it doubled in size since then. So I guess we don't want any surprises. Had that ever been up for public discussion, 
you would have gotten a good crowd before that happened. When they made the access off of Indianwood Road, we all went to meetings to limit the number of spaces that would be there, and it worked. There were less than they wanted. But this is off the point, I know, but it's always bugged me about that Pelton Point Harbor, and I had to say something. <laughs> Well, Vance D'Onofrio, 249 Park Island. Um, people have a lot of concerns about the lake and the traffic. Uh, and frankly, we have a lot of traffic. We have a lot of boat traffic. But I wish everybody would get things in order and really look at what this development wants to do. He says no new docks. I live in the bay on Park Island, and I've been looking at Snug Harbor, a rental house in a the corner, they have seven to nine boats that they're renting in front of their house right now. Snug Harbor has about 20 boats that they rent out. So when he says no new docks, I'm counting 30 docks right there, and those are people that don't even live on the lake. I'd much rather have people that live on the lake and have a boat on the lake. So I do support Mashiri and the project. They are a great developer. I don't know who else you could get to come in here and do what they're gonna do. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is uh, Bernie Berenger. I live at 744 King Circle, and that's about 200 yards south of the sandbar. I've been on this lake for 41 years, and the behavior and the number of boats on that sandbar, July 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, was ridiculous. I do not know how you did not have any accidents or you're not reporting them. So this lake is over capacity. You gotta do something about it. Too much, and more people that live on the lake or near the lake, you're gonna have more boats. So you're adding to uh, an existing issue. Secondly, the health and safety. You go into Dollar Bay, there's not a spot you can uh, park. And where are those people relieving themselves? I wouldn't let my granddaughter swim in that lake for two weeks after a holiday weekend. I think you guys need to add more green space. I don't know about the Lake Orion lumber condos. Is that going through? I mean, that was, so those people need more, we need more green space. So extend Greens Park all the way through the marina and give all the people there and the other people a, a place to uh, recreate. So you guys are dropping the ball. This has been, this issue has been increasing for the last five years. Uh, do we want more police boats? Do we want to be a police state? I don't think so. But you've created a situation that demands more police on that lake. Are they giving breathalyzers to those people at the sandbar? Are they arresting people? Boats are going the wrong way. Jet skis are uh, going in front of them. Uh, I wrote a letter. I hope you guys have the guts to answer the questions that I have. I think you need some quiet time. You need a couple years where you answer the questions these people are asking. And then, after two years of study and listening to the people, then you think about adding. The next thing you're gonna know, we're gonna have 15-story hotels on Lake Orion, or 25-story condos. It's out of hand, listen to your customers, and do the right thing. Thirty-three North Exford. Do the people that live in the township are they aware of this? Are they, are, did you, have you guys told them? I assume I, it was until I believe the last major election when we voted for president and everything that I learned as a village resident I'm not allowed allowed to vote for matters of the township like the sheriff's department, but I have to pay for it. 
And uh, although likewise, if you live in the township, you're not allowed to vote on things that affect the village. But in the last few years, I don't understand what benefit it is to me to pay taxes to live in the village and to pay taxes to live in the township. When you call 911, you don't talk to the Lake Orion Police Department, you talk to the County Sheriff's Department. I called the other day because there's a tractor trailer that somebody just left in the middle of M24. I talked to a lady, she said, sir, you'll have to be patient with me. We dispatch 35 counties and 40 villages. I've called the Lake Orion Police, not emergency number, 45 minutes to an hour. What, what, for what? Lake Orion, the village itself, is less than a mile square if you mushed all together. I was in the fire department for 15 years. I know the village and the township like the back of my hand. But there's so many questions, and people are starting to just repeat themselves over and over, but there's so many questions that all of us have that I don't think a single one of the members of the board ever stopped to think about. Traffic, the boat, the lake, walking traffic. You can't walk down Axford Street to get to Evis without the fear of getting run over. You can't cross 24, you guys built sagebrush and you promised them the world when they wanted to develop that and that fell short. You invited all these other villages to go in the t into the businesses to come into the village, but you're probably, you have a better chance of getting run over on 24 trying to get to the village than you do of finding a parking spot. But, but you guys are gonna add another 40 houses and 80 cars. It's asinine, the whole thing. Sandra Scolari, 284 Lakeview Street. Um, first, I do want to thank you for listening to us because I know you didn't have to tonight. Um, secondly, I, I do want to mention things that haven't been mentioned so far. Um, that, you know, when we're looking at uh, Morseri, again, I, I think they're a great company to be able to build something. I don't want them, though, to get special treatment when it comes to building. So I know as a resident, there's residential guidelines about how close you have to be to the lake or how far away, like 25 feet. I know there's certain parameters about how far you need to be from a sidewalk. It's my understanding that some of these buildings are going to be over the lake, um, let alone not 25 feet from the lake, and potentially two feet from a sidewalk. So when we're talking about care, about our families walking, I think that's something that we need to be concerned with about how these structures are going up, if they're going up. I also have a concern. When I look around this room or I hear many of my neighbors who I don't know you, but what I do hear are people that have been here for a long amount of time and care about this community greatly. I'm not excited about apartments going in, single bedroom apartments on top of it. I don't know how many of those single apartment units those are, but that really screams to me more transient people instead of people who are condo owners, who are owners and care about this community. So if this project goes through, I really would like to see that it's going to be owners. I would like to see some setbacks. I would like to see some care about the other neighbors and communities, the people behind you, the people next to you, so that they don't lose why they came and live in the village. Thank you. My name is Rosemary Ford. I live at 225 North Broadway. And while I'm not disputing what Mosiri can do, because I've seen some of their works, it's beautiful. What my concern is, which I think is what most I'm hearing, is the density that is a great concern in the traffic. When I think of the marina area and all the traffic that goes in and that happens there, that is a great concern, plus the density of the number of people coming and the traffic flow. The other concern is, and they have every right to do this, but it feels like they've come in, and a compliment to them, they came in and bought up, but now it feels like they're gonna basically have the whole west end of the lake. So I know it's gonna happen and they have a right to do it, but it just seems um, overwhelming at this point in time. So thank you. I'm Laura Gabriel at 941 Joslin. I used to live in the village on Heights Road as was my husband. I am a scuba diver. Been diving Lake Orion for over 20 years. I can't stress what my husband has already stressed, the impact on the lake. 
The lake is crap down in the bottom. When I, we, we do underwater salvage, um, just the fact of trying to surface with some of the boat traffic up there, I had jet skis jumping over our dive flag thinking it's fun and we can't surface. But just putting your hands, the, the globules of oil, I mean globules, down there that my suit was nothing but an oil slick just trying to get some of the stuff off the bottom. We do clean up under there. And it's, it's the, the fish life is almost gone. And if you do get fish, you should need it. So adding more to that, and plus the fact that some people are racing around and doing silly things on the lake, adding more people is not gonna help it. But the, the aquatic life is, is got a problem down there. And, and adding more people in boats is not gonna help it. Thank you. Any more public comment? Thank you. Um, I'm doing twofold tonight, if you don't mind. I'll do one first. Uh, in, on behalf of Steve Samini at 357 North Shore, Lake Orion, Michigan, 48362. Uh, Steve Samini, third generation owner on Lake Orion, born and raised. I completely oppose the redevelopment and proposal for the marina. The lake is too crowded as it is, as everyone already knows, and also uh, the ecological effect, uh, not only on our uh, natural environment, but also all of our seawalls. Uh, I see some media, we'll send that over to you. Uh, Nicole Curtis, uh, 120 Bellevue, specifically on Bellevue Island, uh, speaking about not only the ecological effect that this many units on our small lake. Um, this is not Cass Lake, this is not Lake St. Clair, this is little tiny Lake Orion. Um, as someone who has spent a great number of years uh, simply you know, verifying the historical aspects of it, um, the lake traffic and everything else, it's appalling uh, that we can't find a solution uh, to have new development, but also keep the history of our town and keep it within reason. Um, there is no reason to have this many units when everyone here, I mean, it's, it's no shocking surprise. The village is overcrowded, our streets are overcrowded, our infrastructure is overcrowded. Um, I would also like to speak on the behalf that it is completely illegal to announce uh, something on an agenda and have it in your records and then it mysteriously disappears when you have a large gathering here of people opposing it. I would call that a good game of card shuffle right there. Uh, so speaking on behalf of someone who has spent a lot of money investing back into this small town uh, and also uh, celebrating it on a global level because it's, I'm proud to be from Lake Orion. I'm proud that it's still a quaint village. I see a lot of familiar faces here today. And just knowing the caring community here, uh, knowing that you are having rental units there. I've worked in very large cities and when you, uh, when you introduce more transient uh, people, you know, this is not Cass Lake Shore Club, and that's what we're asking to have built on Lake Orion. Uh, this is something where you need sustainability in this village. Uh, you know, I'm getting up there in years, my family members that built this city got up in years and have passed away, but we need life owners. We need lifers in this town. You don't get that from high-end rental units. I understand a need for mixed use, affordable housing, but this is not what we're asking to put here. Um, I am offering, uh, on behalf of my firm, uh, free services to this developer to come up with something that is more uh, conducive to the area, uh, to act as a liaison so that we may find a solution. We know that we had a vacant marina for many years. We get that. But again, you don't give the keys to the village to anybody that all of a sudden just comes in and wants to do anything. I mean, no one and everybody knows my struggles I've had just getting permits and working with the village on a single residential home. But now you've all of a sudden want to just give a pass to anyone who's going to drop in here with, what, 94 units? That's absolutely ridiculous. So uh, I can't wait to see when we have this really on the agenda again. I would ask that all of you council members um, board members really take a moment to realize what it is that we're asking you to do. Public opinion is something that is very important. That's where our cities thrive. This is obviously not something that's passe or anything that doesn't, anyone doesn't have strong passion about. But it's also a legal aspect. Um, you have to look at what is good for the future of your village. 
Uh, I know that many of you on there have been here forever. I've only been here for 28 years, if you really want to ask me the truth, but more like 46 now. But this is very important, and it's also, as someone brought up, the health and safety. Uh, we need an environment where our children still have the quaintness of a village and a community. And what this will do is just, it's blowing up our town. And we don't need that. We do not need any more. We do not need any more residents, personally, in the village. I think it's overrun as it is. So I will ask that um, anyone, uh, all of you on the board, really remember that this is a huge issue. Uh, when something's on the agenda also, keep it on the agenda so it doesn't mis mysteriously disappear. And uh, congratulations to everyone who spoke tonight. It's, it's very cool to see everyone so impassioned about this. But um, I don't just come here as an advocate just for the hell of it. I'm a lifelong resident. I own many houses here. And the history of this town and the sustainability of it is very important to me. So thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chair, if I may. Please. My name is Dominic J. Mosheri. I represent uh, four generations in both the paternal and maternal side in building communities in southeast Michigan. Our family resides in, not the village, but Morion Township in an Oakland Township. Uh, we have vested interest to do what the best interest for the community is, and we consider all of you our neighbors. A couple things that, this, that because you don't know, this is why these meetings are well, and, and the, uh, the Planning Commission, uh, we've had a hearing before the Planning Commission already in, in the uh, Village Council in regards to Starboard, which is the marina. Um, significant things occurred through dialogue, which were great, and things that we changed in the plan, which are for the better. The current sales building there where the marina is uh, on, on M24 at Broadway Street, or they call that Park Street or Broadway at that location? Park. Which one is it? It's Park. Park, thank you. Park. And it's only two feet from the right of way and 16 feet from the curb. Our, our plans are that it's anywhere from 39 to 82 feet, averaging 62 feet uh, from the curb and 42 feet from the right of way. That's a huge improvement. We have a community park plan for there. There are no, all those curb cuts you see between Flint Street all the way to Greens Park, all those will be eliminated in its entirety. And it'll be all green space and a park and a view shed open to the lake uh, from going driving south down Park or M24 uh, looking uh, southwest. You'll have a clear view to Lake Orient. So we're gonna add views that are not there right now. It's very important. We're community spirit minded. We don't want to have residents that may relocate to one of our communities in the village or new families to something that is not desirable. We're very concerned about traffic. And I know you've heard traffic in, traffic nauseum, you know, your experts, but that's the first thing we did. And we're reducing the traffic problems. The Flint Street. Yeah. So this will be, I'll be two more items, sir. So as you'll see through the process, the traffic studies done, and there's the intersection improvements that will greatly save lives at the Flint uh, Park and Lake Street intersection. So we've, we've abated that. And also in regards to the current conditions uh, of the marina and the building structures right on and over the water. It is not true that we are going to be building anything up and over the water. If anything, we're increasing the setbacks uh, anywhere from three to tenfold of the current conditions. And that's very important. And another thing, water quality. Water quality right now, there's no water quality structures. Our development will take into account full water quality and filter structures before any water is discharged, storm water is discharged into Lake Orion. Right now it is unrestricted and goes into the lake. And we know that you're very concerned as just as we are. And in addition to boat traffic, we're not going to increase the boat traffic. The boat traffic is an issue now. And I heard the, the concern with the displacement of the people at the marina. Well, right now, we're going to be displacing the trailers, the white tarps in the wintertime, the storage, the sight lines, and the blight. And at the same time, there is a hearing that's going to be scheduled or to be considered to be scheduled in September by this commission. We look forward to seeing you then when you have the information before you and the uh, 
Planning Commission and the Village Council. There's no, no innuendos, there's no side deals. I take great offense to that. The idea is offensive. And then he was apologetic to Mr. Van Portley and my family for even that suggestion. That mere suggestion is intolerable, and I won't stand for it because those innuendos are just BS. But thank you very much for your time. But all your other concerns are absolutely legitimate, and I do thank you for those. I do have one question, Bill Raymore from 217 Park Island. Will you let, um, will there be some working with the folks on the lake to talk about what should be here? As you know, I know there's a plan right here, but I think everyone agrees that the, way, the buildings are way too high and there's too much density and it doesn't fit the, I'll say, the, the, the feeling of the, of the village, right? The whole, the whole mojo of the village, for lack of uh, better words. Um, are you guys, is this in concrete, this plan? Or is there room to work it, to make, to be, make it better fit the, uh, the village? If you choose, you choose the plan. Uh, there's a process, and this is the first step of many processes, and we've already occurred two of those, and yeah, we are listening to those. But one thing is a reminder that the uh, single family building height is 30 feet, and most of the new homes on the lake are walkouts, so they're approaching 40 feet as far as the height from the water. Uh, we're shorter than that in our bid points, and you'll see as the reviews go forward, you'll see that. One thing I did miss, Mr. Chairman, is the view from Atwater looking uh, west uh, in toward the lake. We are expanding that view exponentially. There's a park, there are no curb cuts, no car pollution, there'll be no car parking in front of any buildings along uh, what there would becomes Broadway. And when you are at Atwater looking across, uh, there's only gonna be one curb cut, and there's, right now there's seven of them. You go from seven to one. It's huge safety uh, improvement. And at the same time, that view shed uh, looking out of the lake, uh, right now I believe the, the buildings are between 16, 16 feet apart. Oops, excuse me. That's mom. <laughs> um, the, uh, and we're at 44 feet, is that correct? So uh, threefold as far as that view shed width all the way to the lake. But you'll see this the plans further and each plan is looked at independently of each other because as they should be. Uh, it just happens to be the same common denominator as far as the developer. Uh, and, but we, we also understand that you wouldn't want things to be in the wrong hands for the future of this community. Thank you. And, and you said that the hearing is? We'll be setting that later at this meeting. It. Yes. Tom DiAugustino, 175 Axford, also have a place on Dollar Bay. I want to uh, put a little finer point on something Mr. Mashiri said about Mr. Van Portfleet and this claim of backside deals and all of that. To uh, Ken's credit, during the city council meeting, after you guys gave some preliminary review in the PUD, your attorney raised the question about what had happened with one of your members here. And Ken decided that he wanted to have a determination made as to whether he should recuse himself before anything went further. And there was some debate. Ultimately, your attorney examined Ken at length on those issues. And there are very specific criteria that have to be met to determine whether there is a conflict of interest. Other members of the city council also questioned Ken. And it was determined that there is no conflict of interest, that Ken doesn't have a stake in this, and that he shouldn't be recused, although he stood prepared to do that. So not everybody was here for that meeting. There's an awful lot of innuendo. It is very common in these sorts of things that people who come to these meetings have heard a lot, a lot, a lot of information. There should be no doubt in anybody's mind in this community that the issue of whether there's some deal between Ken and the Mosheris there is no deal. The lawyers have concluded that and the city council to their satisfaction after examination. Thank you. Hi, Joanne Patterson, 65 North Shore. 
Um, I was just looking at the starboard um, layout, and I'm really concerned because I really have always thought that Lake Orion is a walking community. And according to this, the only way you can get out onto Lake Street now is this new entrance onto Flint Street. And the whole Flint Street and that whole area up to Eva's is already packed and hard to find cars to park and things like that. But it just seems, when I see those gravel trucks go by, I do not ride my bike across. I've had to drop my bicycle. I've had to worry about a school bus not seeing me. I wave, I do everything I can possibly do to cross, this, cross M24. And I'm really, really concerned about the extra traffic waiting for people, they get anxious, those lights are short, and I know those gravel trucks do not hit the right speed, but there's nothing we can do about that. Um, I'm just really concerned about travel, we used, or going across there. I used to let the kids go, I, I can't do that anymore. It's just not safe. <laughs> Is there anyone else that would like to speak? I'm Amanda Prince. I live at what? Speak up. I'm Amanda Prince. I live at 170 West Flint Street. Um, this is going to go up right in front of my house. Completely takes away the view. I have a young son. We love our neighborhood. I know a lot of the neighbors in here. It just makes me sad because we want to live in this community. We don't want to be pushed out. So. That's all I have to say. Good evening. Jeff Rolfing. I live at 534 Central Drive. I've been a resident here for just over six years. I grew up in Clarkston. I've come on this lake for many years boating. Um, I think you guys, and I know everybody's kind of talked around this topic, but I think the point that's been missed and needs some attention is, as elected officials, you guys are responsible for doing what's right for this entire community. I'm fortunate to live on the lake. I'm truly blessed to see my kids be able to go out and swim. Not everybody in this community has that opportunity, but they have access to see the lake. They have access to get on the lake. And I think that is one of the most important things that needs to be considered here is all residents need access to the most valuable part of this community. Any sort of development that takes that away is a tremendous loss for anybody who doesn't live on the lake. And another thing to consider is, with the removal of the only marina and source of fuel on this lake, is going to make every single person who has a boat on this lake fill their boat up with carry cans. That's an extreme fire hazard, number one. Marinas will not let you fill your boat at the dock because of the fire hazard. And number two, there's a tremendous amount of spillage every time somebody tries to fill their boat up from the dock. Without any source of fuel on this lake, the pollution will go up. The risk of fire will go up. So there needs to be some sort of plan for the residents and the people who use this lake to have the safe ability to fuel their boats. I, I hate going up and down, but that's, that's, that's a fallacy. The, the gas pump will be in operation. There won't be that, whatever you're mentioning, that is just outright rumor and not proper information. But, but thank you, those concerns are legitimate. And we are not doing that. Thank you. We, we, the, the gas pump it will remain and will be brought up to, to speed into the proper EPA standards. And so whatever method that this gentleman mentioned, it will not be occurring. This is not a debate for tonight. I just want to clarify. Yeah, so yeah, I just want to clarify serves. that we're not no, no, following no, no. the please. law right now. Please, please. Well, well, he, so, can't, he can't get up and speak again. Well, they, yeah. well they, hey, excuse me. This, he was answering a direct question, but, but this yes. is why, okay, hold on. Okay. This is why we actually have a pub public hearing. Why a public hearing should be told or advertised to all the residents. You sit here and you are angry. You have uh, different feelings. 
I too, as a resident, sit there with you. I have the same questions you have. That's why we have a public hearing, so that there can be a question and answer and uh, to, to get rid of the, some of the innuendo or uh, misconceptions or misinformation, whichever you want to call it. So I'm, we're happy to listen to you. We didn't want to, because of whatever happened, we did not want to deny you your opportunity to speak and we want to listen. We encourage you to attend every meeting. So that's why we have a public hearing. That is supposed to be set tonight. Whatever people think, I'm just telling you the truth. So I don't want to get into a debate, but I, we definitely want to hear if people have comments. Is there any other comments? Speak up, you guys. You have another sure. get up here. Hi, uh, Tom Williams, 167 South Andrews. You know, there's a lot of other villages around, like Romeo, uh, that have a lot of the uh, historical homes. And when it comes to changing anything on the historical homes, uh, they've got ordinances that that cover that, where you can't where you can't do anything to the house. I think by these developments, I know you're getting ready to they they demolish the uh, Campbell House which is supposed to be haunted anyway, but the, <laughs> the, I mean, that's a historical home. My house was built in 1900. I think that one was built before mine. And isn't there some ordinance within the village that protects these historical homes? Because I, Jim, I'm pretty sure when you built your house, that that was a historical home as well. And you, there was an ordinance where I think that it, it, within the village of, of Lake Orion, where you had to maintain at least one wall. One wall of that, of the historical home had to stay up there. And you could build all around it, but the one wall had to stand. These guys, you know, I, I don't know about this development. I mean, I, I'm kind of against it myself, but I think that, that something's got to preserve this, these historical homes around town. Because otherwise, we're, uh, uh, if Romeo can do it, we can do it. I, 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 I just can't understand why we can't preserve these houses. That's it. Thank you. Anyone else? Delaney Tunney, I live at 94 North Shore Drive over Ray Cross from the lake. I live over there. I've lived in the village for probably 18, 20 years, and I've lived here my whole life. I love the feel of the village. I want to be able to get out of my neighborhood in a timely fashion. Right now, the intersection is dangerous. I have watched so many people run the red light, speed through that intersection, and all over that side of 24 where you guys were planning this development. What is your plan to make that area safer? And along with the infrastructure too, what is it going to do for the power, the sewage, all that stuff? I had no idea about this until someone put a flyer in my mailbox. I had never heard of this development, nothing. So what is your guys' plan to make that side of the neighborhood safer for all of us that live over there? That's all. Thank you. My name is Reva Beatty. I live at 81 Crescent, and I've been doing the historical boat tours on the lake for the last 13 years. Um, my parents, Scott and Kathy Campbell, currently own Orion Marine. The, the closing, from my understanding, has not happened yet. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the history of the buildings that are still existing there. Um, the Darling Cottage uh, up on the hill has been there since 1883. It was the very first home built on the lake. I went down to the courthouse, I did all the research, and yes, it is haunted, but that's besides the fact. I would like to preserve some of these historical buildings. 
the Rod's Canvas, the, the home that you see at the gas dock, those have all been there since the late 1800s. They were all built in 1880, around there. It's been a boat servicing, boat livery for over 140 years. This lake community needs a boat, like we just need a marina that services our lake. We need to service our lake community. We don't need more housing on our lake. Um, let's talk about the infrastructure of our lake for just a minute. We have a lot of wake surfing boats on the lake. We're just even taking that out of it. We just have a lot of lake traffic to begin with. We're losing our roads out to Bellevue Island, for instance. One of our roads is literally eroding into the lake, and that's due to the heavy lake traffic that we have. I can't even imagine not being able to drive home one day. This is going to change everything with our lake. And I'm sorry if I'm getting emotional. I really didn't want to talk tonight, but I really hope that something can be saved for these buildings. Thank you. Anyone else? Anybody outside who wants to speak? I know it's very tight quarters. No. Oh, all good? Okay, so we're gonna move on with our agenda, which actually is a public hearing. So if you'd like to stay, please. Um, Mr. Chair? Yes. Can I ask for just a three minute recess? Uh, let's take a five minute recess, reconvene at 9.15. Thank you. Uh, revised text amendments to Article 13, General Provisions, Section 13.11, Accessory Buildings and Structure, Boat Houses, and Article 2, Definitions and Rules of Construction, Section 2.02, .02, Definitions. Laura, do you have a... Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, this text amendment to the zoning ordinance has been discussed at several meetings throughout this year. Uh, most recently at the regular June Planning Commission meeting, um, the text was finalized and um, a motion to set the public hearing was made, uh, which is what we are entertaining this evening. Um, these are text amendments um, to Article 2, Definitions, and Article 13. Uh, general provisions as related to accessory buildings and structures for boathouses. Um, the proposed text amendments are in ordinance format in your packet, um, and the recommendation this evening is that pending any changes or recommendations from the public hearing tonight, um, that the Planning Commission would recommend approval of these two text amendments to Village Council for their consideration at a future meeting. Thank you. All right, thank you. So now, we'll ask the public if you have any comments regarding the boat hoists, boat house. Yes. Uh, excuse me, before you start, we'll have the same rules of three minutes and name and address, please. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sandra Scolari. I live at 284 Lakeview Street. Is it possible that you would be able to read for us what the original uh, ordinance is and then what the changes are? So for Article 2, which is definitions, um, it is changing the word, um, the wording in the, the definition of a boat hoist from <coughs> boats to watercraft. So it now reads an open structure used to lift watercraft out of the water or above the surface of the land, whether permanent or seasonal, with or without a roof, but open on all other sides. So there's one word that's changing there. In the definition of a boathouse, that is changing to read an enclosed structure for sheltering a watercraft and watercraft accessories when constructed over the water or over an access channel to the water, but not including commercial boat shelters. And then in Article 13, um, clarifying that detached accessory buildings um, may not exceed 16 feet in height unless otherwise regulated by the ordinance. And under D3G, specifying that boathouses may not have a floor area that exceeds 50% of the boathouse area. 
that portion is added to the sentence so that it would fully read, must not have a floor area that exceeds 50% of the boathouse area and must not unreasonably impair the view and use of the lake by neighboring property. Okay. If I could just, can I ask a question? Sure. Because um, I've, I've been here quite a few times. I was trying to understand why we felt that this needed to be amended when we already had an ordinance that stated that we couldn't live in it and we had to be able to have a watercraft access it at the lake level, um, I didn't understand why the amendment was even needed. Do I? Know? This amendment was to specify that the floor area can exceed 50%, so to place a, a limitation and an understanding um, for what could be constructed and uh, built for new boathouses. Um, this was language that was recommended by the, reviewed and recommended by the attorney. Is there, a, is there a distinction that's made between a floor or a loft or a catwalk? Like what is considered a floor? The floor area could take the form of a catwalk. It's the surface within the, the buildable envelope of the boathouse. Is it, is a floor above a boat or is it next to a boat? The boat could be hoisted into the air. So it has to be a boat, that, a boat that's hoisted? No, it could, it could be, the floor area is 50% of the inside of the, the space, but you could have a watercraft that's hoisted above it for storage. That was one of the concerns that the Planning Commission talked about early on. What if a boat went under it? Then is it still considered 50%? Because then it would be above the boat, then it would be a loft and not a floor. The boathouses are intended to be one story, so it would just be the floor area, not above a boat. I understand that, but my specific question is I happen to have a sailboat, and um, <clears throat> my sailboat enters my boathouse at the lake level, and I have space above it for me to hoist my boat up to onto during the winter months, and then I have a rack that it sits on during the summer months for access. And so it's technically not a floor, it is a loft. And so I didn't know whether this attributes to the loft or we are, is it a floor. I just want a distinction. I think we'd have to clarify that with the township building official, but it doesn't sound like that would be impacted by this regulation. Just for new construction, the floor area only. Not anything that you would use to store or hoist. When you're talking about new construction, does that also mean um, making repairs to your existing boathouse? Because I know many of us have boathouses and we need to make repairs to them over time. Mm -hmm. And so would the new ordinance impact our repairs? If you were removing your boathouse and Proposing a new one? No, just repairing the existing boathouse. General repairs are acceptable, yes. Okay. If, if there can be some distinction about floors or lofts, or again, I understand that we've moved it to watercraft, which I really appreciate that because there was a time when it was considered a, only a pontoon boat or a speedboat. But I think a boathouse by definition is anything you can pull a boat into on the lake level. And if you can't pull in the boat, then of course, whatever you've built inside impedes that. But if it doesn't, it should be still considered a boathouse. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Chairman, um, I do have a petition that was signed by several people in the community that we have tried to get into the record a couple of times. I want to make sure that the signatures of some 80 or 90 residents in the community have signed this petition against granting or making. I, I, uh, I have a petition that was previously, that was signed and previously tried to get it into the record. It was signed by many of the residents around the lake uh, that are opposed to the changing of this 
uh, ordinance. And uh, so I, I want to know the correct way to get it into the record this time so that it becomes a permanent part of this record and this meeting. So we will add it to the record and the clerk will, yes, we'll get a copy with the names and addresses. Thank you. I'm Harry Stephen, 311 North Shore, Riparian. I have had the experience of building a boathouse and going through the red tape of doing such. Uh, there are rules by the DNR, and I had to get a permit from the DNR to accomplish that. I had to get a building permit from the uh, township, because that's where the building official is, and they have no guidelines about what it is. The only guideline was by the DNR, it cannot be any bigger than the original footprint that was there, because it was an existing boathouse. Another thing that's tapping to, happening in the village is in the boat hoist. Many of them are canopied, meaning that the boat is protected. And the new canopies are designed to accommodate the surf boats and those with large bridges that are in there. So consequently, the viewing aspects from the lake from neighbors is impaired because I'm going to estimate but the ridge pole on some of these new hoists are 10 and maybe 12 feet high, as opposed to just a hoist that's going to lift your boat out and the lower conventional covers that we've had in the past. Uh, I think we should consider that. I think we also may want to consider how many hoists, covered hoists that we can have on a riparian property. Do we need, if we have two hoists, do, can they both be covered? Should one be open and one cl closed or covered for protection? I think the ordinance needs to be looked at further, and I would suggest that it be integrated with whatever is appropriate with the DNR and building officials to accomplish the same. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Rob Nelson, 25 North North Shore. Um, I understand this is just for new construction of boathouses, and what if there is damage, um, if you had to rebuild a boathouse that you had that has more than 50% um, walking area? The ordinance would not allow for that then? Or does it get well, grandfathered in? Because we've, we've got a boathouse, there's a complete floor upstairs and a boat, up, or a boat underneath. Not as expecting any damage, but should that happen, we'd like to be able to rebuild in the same footprint that we had. Laura, do you have an answer? So we, the structure currently doesn't meet the standards of today's ordinance. It's considered a nonconformity. And the zoning ordinance has a specific table um, in Article 17 that spells out when um, structures need to come into compliance with new regulations or whether they can continue to exist. So maintenance structural repairs are generally permitted. Modernization, when it's 50% of the true cash value, needs to come into compliance. Rebuilding after a catastrophe is permitted if the damage is less than 75% of the true cash value. So there's um, you know, a, a number of different scenarios where a structure could be rebuilt or not. Um, and they have to be looked at on an individual basis compared to what the village has adopted in this article. And who makes that determination if it's 75% or more from a catastrophe? Um, typically, in my experience, that is uh, the assessor. OK, thank you. <clears throat> Any other comments? Sandra Scalera again, 284 Lakeview Street. Um, I went through that exact thing, and I've been fighting the village since October on a stop work order that I have not been able to repair my boathouse because of the change of this ordinance. So I did finally get my permit, but it took me hiring an attorney in order to do that, and that's not representing the people.
Any other public comments? Okay, with that, we'll close the public hearing. And move on to commissioner's comments. Any discussion? I, I guess regarding some of the comments uh, that were made, uh, personally, we've rehabbed <coughs> several boathouses with the conditions that we're talking about today. And I can just tell you there's ways to do it. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's the percentage of value or whatever it is that you're you're restoring, but but if something happens to your boathouse, most likely we could fix it. I don't know about uh, this woman's specific case, but um, it can be done. I don't. Any other discussion comments? I I thought we had like three meetings about this ordinance, and we talked many times about clarifying the definitions because the previous or previous ordinance was vague. And so we created, we put the planner and came up with some definitions that help decrease the vagueness of the ordinance. And because of the 200 year old boathouses and then the desire to build brand new boathouses, there is a lot of variety and unique situations in the boathouse world. And there's no one paint all standard that I could find that covers all the boathouses. So we tried to clarify, I tried to clarify the definitions so it would be just a little cleaner, a little more straightforward. But I don't believe its intention was to be all encompassing or to accommodate everyone or to not accommodate anyone. The, going along with that comment from Mr. Lamb, the 50% consideration was part of the idea from this board and I believe talked about at one of the earlier meetings because um, not having that then it runs the possibility of being a storage accessory building on the waterfront and this seemed to be a good middle ground to help accommodate still being a boat storage or a boat house. The one problem I have, uh, Mr. Chair, is it's not on our agenda. We just have a public hearing. So it's not on our agenda for acceptance or not. And it should be. Right. Didn't the planner didn't the planner give us the option to choose to, to choose, choose to, the to action, choose. wait 30 days or take action at correct. any meeting? Right, correct. Okay. So, you know, Mr. Chair, in my position, it's always been that we did not need to change this ordinance other than to clarify the fact that watercraft should be placed in, in place of boats so it allowed for a wider variety and there would be no discussion in the village regarding what's a watercraft or what's a boat. So I think that was a good move. With regards to changing and adding a, uh, a restriction on the floor area, I, I don't think that's necessary. Um, if somebody has more catwalks or more area in the front and they're 55% or 60%, they're gonna have problems. And uh, anybody that's gonna spend the money to build a boathouse on the lake is not likely to turn it into a shed for their lawnmowers um, at the cost that it takes to build or rebuild the boathouse on this lake. Okay. Any other comments? Discussion? I'd say, you know, listening to Rob Nelson's comments, I would understand your concern on wanting to rehab your you know, boathouse if and so it was damaged and the complexity that could lead to uh, hiring an attorney or someone to clarify what is the total assessed value. Um, so I understand those concerns loud and clear and could see how that could create complications. All right, any other? Uh, pleasure of the board. Uh, we'll make a motion to send this to Village Council or wait 30 days and we can address it at our next meeting. 
I'd like to make a motion and send it to the village council. Is there any support? Moved and supported. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. 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 No. Okay. Uh, can we get a roll call vote, please? Cummins. Nay. 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 Thank you. Lamb? Yes. Laurent? Yes. Greer? Oops, oh, sorry. Smith? No. Sable? No. Van Porfley? Yes. One, two, three. Motion fails. All right. So do we wait 30 days to talk about this? We, I, we, I, I was a nay. Okay. I, 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 so I wanted to That's call. Stop right there because I knew I missed somebody. And you're it's done. Yeah, it's done. It's done. Three, four. Right. Yeah. So it's just done. It's right? late. Yep. So we're goodbye. Okay. All right. So now we'll move on. It's a new business item, agenda item eight. <coughs> and our first uh, item A <coughs> is the discussion on the 141 West Elizabeth Street Apartments final development plan review. Laura. Thank you. This is a project that the commission and the village council has um, reviewed before as it is a planned unit development, a PUD. Um, the project is to construct a three-story apartment building with 16 units at the property uh, known today as 141 West Elizabeth Street. The single family home on that site would be demolished and the lot uh, adjacent to it to the west acquired and combined to allow for this development. Um, starting in 2021 and then earlier this um, winter, the PUD was granted approval by the Village Council. And um, the applicant has since submitted for their final development, their final site plan. Um, our recommendation is on page uh, two of our report, which, let me just confirm the packet page. 22. 22. Yeah, 22. 22, thank you. Um, there's no proposed phasing for this project. So since it is um, just a single construction and general conformance to the site plan requirements in Article 19 are met, um, we do recommend final site development plan approval for the PUD apartment building at 141 West Elizabeth Street. However, that is contingent that um, several items are addressed to your satisfaction, um, either this evening or for administrative approval separately. The first is that uh, during the PUD eligibility um, presentation and discussion, you know, a number of trees are to be removed from the site. And while there is landscaping proposed, um, for the final development, there's still 53 and a half inches of caliper of existing trees that will not be replaced on site. One of the discussions that was had with the village um, was that the remainder of these inches would be provided for either on site as additional um, vegetation where space allowed or if space was constrained um, at additional site in the village um, that would be acceptable um, to the commission and council. Um, in addition to those replacement trees, there are just a couple of minor landscaping items um, recommending some greater diversity of the species. Um, increased screening for the parallel parking spaces. There are four parallel parking spaces to the rear, the south edge of the property. Um, and we note that an irrigation system must be provided for. The applicant has agreed to the additional screening and irrigation and diversity um, in a letter. Um, that they have provided um, for you this evening. Um, there are uh, several covered parking spaces in the southwest and southeast corners of the building that appear to project out into the drive aisles. Um, the fire department um, had granted approval uh, of the plan, but we just want to confirm that they are aware of that projection um, and that that doesn't pose any um, concern to their turning radii. 
Um, we ask that elevations and building materials for the carport be provided. The carport will contain six uh, space for six covered vehicles um, on the west edge of the property. And the developer has provided um, an image of a similar carport that they propose to use at your seat this evening. Uh, it appears to be of a, a like a standing metal. Um, there are two building mounted wall lights, um, wall packs, more utilitarian, that are proposed on the front elevation along West Elizabeth Street. One of the conditions of the PUD eligibility um, from Village Council was that those wall packs be removed on the north elevation and that only decorative building mounted lighting be allowed on the front facade. Um, so we recommend that those just be removed. They're already proposing decorative sconces on the front facade, um, so there will still be adequate lighting in the front. Um, again, we requested a more decorative mailbox be incorporated in the front entryway of the building. The applicant has agreed to this condition. And lastly, we note that um, there are just a couple uh, locations along the property where the illumination levels are just a bit too bright um, for the ordinance, so they would need to be reduced, and the applicant has agreed to that as well. So the, the, the major outstanding items for your discussion tonight are the replacement trees, if additional landscaping can be provided on site or elsewhere, um, and the safety concerns in the, um, regarding those couple parking spaces, and then the building materials for the carport. Thank you. All right. Is there any discussion? I have one, Mr. Chair. Please. In the bullet points that were just mentioned <clears throat> as part of the condition for approval, I would like to reference page, back to page 26. Building design and architecture, third paragraph, it's underlined. Elevations and materials for proposed carport must be presented to the Planning Commission and addressed to their satisfaction. In the bullet points, that is noted, and it's the fourth bullet point, elevations and materials for the carport be provided. I believe and accepted by the Planning Commission should be added there as just part of that consideration as noted in the earlier report. Right. That's all. Any other discussion? Any motion? I'd just like a, a clarification. Are you saying that you want the petitioner to bring those materials to the Planning Commission for approval first, or are they going to be an administrative approval? Um, I would go with administrative for streamlining, but it should be approved, not just provided. And I'll make that motion to accept the planning, the planner's recommendation with a change to bullet point four, elevations and building materials for the carport be provided to the administration and accepted. Support. Right. Move, moved and supported. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We will move on now to item 8B. This is the starboard, starboard redevelopment preliminary plan and a set of public hearing, a date set for public hearing. Laura, do you want to start, please? Certainly, thank you. The starboard residential redevelopment is um, another planned unit development, a PUD. And as you recall, the Planning Commission did discuss PUD eligibility earlier this summer, and it was recommended to Village Council to grant um, approval of that PUD eligibility, which then Village Council considered on June 13th. 
Um, so the next step in that process, um, since the applicant has secured PUD eligibility, is to submit the preliminary PUD plan, the preliminary development plan. Um, which requires a public hearing. So the recommendation this evening is um, to provide any feedback to the applicant based on the discussion this evening, based on the cursory look at the plans, and to schedule that public hearing. Um, due to the number of attendees tonight, um, it might be helpful to have that public hearing at another venue that's more conducive to um, um, public participation. Um, the commission, if the developer is willing, may also want to consider having um, an hour before that meeting with the public hearing, um, having more of an open house style where you could drop in, the developer would be available to answer any questions, um, just to kind of have some of that discussion or gather information before the meeting itself starts and the public hearing officially um, occurs. Is, is, um, the, is an hour enough for that? I mean, we really... At listening tonight, great comments from everybody, but some were nobody even knew what was going on and making comments that were totally wrong. Other people listening to those comments that were totally wrong. How do we give them better knowledge before they show up? I think if the commission was interested in, in, and the developer was willing to have more than just an hour, um, that would be helpful. Um, Sometimes for larger projects, um, we've also seen where the boards are um, printed, you know, in color um, and put on display at Village Hall or perhaps, you know, another community facility. I know it's not in the village, but the library, for instance, um, where that information can be more, you know, easily disseminated. Uh, we'll also work on getting the latest plans on the village's website um, this week not within any packets, but just the standalone plans so people can easily download them. The plans are also always available to view um, at Village Hall offices during regular business hours. Mr. Chair, I, I'd like to reiterate that there was that question asked earlier about if I want information, how do I get it? And the statement was made, well, the website may not be accurate. The best thing to do is come down here to the Village Hall, ask to see the plans. It's available. Anyone can do that. Thank you, sir. All right. Well, I want to go back to that one more time, if I might. Sure. Um, I understand that there was a a piece dropped in uh, mailboxes. So if we could get some of those individuals that were good at communicating that out to get some of this information out for the next meeting, that might help us. Chairman. Yes. Um, I've often been confused about how the planned urban development process works in the village and I've raised numerous questions about it in, during the council process. What the planned unit development process is for in my mind is it's for difficult pieces of property that people want to develop. These are you know properties that aren't square, they're not standard, they're on the water, they have existing conditions, they have a lot of problems or they just have weird geometry. Um, Based on your comments tonight, we all understand that the marina property is weird. It has strange geometry. It has strange topography. It involves a lot of historical structures and other issues. Consequently, I decided that it was eligible for consideration of a planned urban development. That doesn't mean that we're approving of development. It means it's eligible for consideration. Most projects in the villages in the past that I have known about that were planned urban developments were only granted planned urban development status so that developers could get more density. I might point out since I came on council, we, we did reject uh, planned urban development for the lumber yard where they had very, very high density. Developers said to us, well, if you don't give us what we want, we're leaving. And we told them, feel free to make your own choices. So I, I really want to reiterate that there's no slam dunks here. 
Um, we do consider these things. We have ordinances and standards that we're required to follow and we can't arbitrarily change. During our first review of this project, most of you people aren't even aware of it. You never saw it. You didn't come to the meetings, didn't come to council. Uh, a lot of attention was drawn to setbacks and the different variances and things that they would want. And this board questioned them heavily on that. And we actually asked them to make a lot of changes. So I, I want to tell you that I believe we're hearing you very well and I believe that the Mosheris have been very respectful to the village so far. And um, I'm hoping that this kind of dialogue will continue so that we can move this forward in a, a legal and um, organized fashion. It's not a done deal. Nothing is a done deal until the village council approves the final plan. So we are here trying to set up the stage for the village council. So hopefully we can screen this project and work with them enough where everyone will be happy. And um, I just wanted to explain the PUD process. It's very confusing. It seems like we're approving something in the beginning, but we're actually not. We could deny it at any time along the process. So thank, thank you. Mr. Chair, would you like to speak? Thank you, Mr. Chair and the Planning Commission. Uh, if you set a public hearing date, uh, we will welcome it at the venue of your choice. Ian, I think two hours in advance, uh, we'll have a open house that evening, that same day. Um, and so whatever date you set, we will accommodate that location. Ian, the two hours prior, if not three, depending what the uh, Planning Commission would prefer, we'll, we'll make it for that whole afternoon if necessary. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any, any... That's me again. <laughs> I do it. Um, question is... Say your name, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Jeff Seiner. Thank you. 416 Lake. Um, Obviously, we, the, the residents put a lot of effort tonight to be here thinking this was a public hearing. Uh, obviously, it wasn't, but uh, what's going to be the difference and what's going to, you know, uh, personally, I got involved. I, I, I sent those flyers out that you saw, okay? I went to mail, 190 mailboxes, all right, because I wanted to get the word out to my neighbors. And uh, I don't want to have to do that again. You know, is that every time you're going to have a hear public hearing, I got to put flyers out in mailboxes? Uh, it took a lot of effort to do this, and you saw the, the energy and the passion. Now, if you set another hearing date, what, you know, am I going to have to round all the same people up? Or what's going to generate them? How are they going to find out? It took me to do it the last time. Um, and what would be different? this public hearing versus tonight? What, what really is the formal difference? You're gonna hear comments from everybody. Is that not what I understand? That's what I thought the public hearing is, and that isn't what we did today? I, I'm confused. Mr. Chair? Shh, please. I, I think the opportunity is to educate people ahead of time. Um, I don't know what was in your flyer. I haven't seen it, but I listen to a lot of people with a lot of energy and a lot of emotion, but in many times without the knowledge I think they should have, could have had if we'd have done a better job getting that knowledge to them so that they can make a better decision. So the hearing would be more of what we just saw today or what? Well, I mean, you're gonna have, <clears throat> the developers gonna You'd go, you'd go through, the, the developer would take you through the project and answer all your questions. Up front, okay. That's the difference. Then. Yeah. It's just precluded by the developer explaining his position and what he's doing and then it's so, op open comment. So that there's good knowledge to make good decisions. Okay. Commissioner well, Van Portfolio. I don't know what I'm gonna have to do to ruster everybody up again, but. <laughs> Mr. Chair, Commissioner Van Portfleet. I can recall two properties 
uh, that we um, had discussed with the property owner about putting signage out front uh, related to the public hearing date and um, the ability to alert the public to come and uh, participate and suggest that we might confer with the developer on doing that same thing with regards to the property. Why don't you, yeah, why don't you have the developer put flyers in mailboxes or whatever, what, let that, leave it to them to get the community and well, aware of what's going on. The, the, Mr. Chairman, the, the PUD is, is in a, essence a rezoning of the property. A PUD is, is right, am I correct right. with that? That's, that's the point. So, so in many communities, when there's a rezoning proposed, you'll see them throughout the Orient Township, and if you read the, uh, the local paper, they always have published uh, notices. Now, I know everybody nowadays doesn't read the local paper. Right. Um, they go online. So what communities do is they'll put up a, a standard sign in front of the property in public view, I and mean, we all drive by. I drive by the marina every single day, usually twice. And so by putting a sign up and publishing the standard is to put public notices in the newspapers and on our website, I think I would recommend to the village manager um, that he participate in the permitting of these signs at the direction of this board. Mm -hmm. That's a good. That's but a good I, I don't believe we currently have an ordinance that supports that. So. This would be something that we, we could recommend to the village manager. We have an interim manager now, and he could um, uh, make arrangements. I'm sure the most sherry's would be, they've provided plenty of stuff. I'm sure they would put up a beautiful sign okay. um, indicating their intentions, and then everyone in the neighborhood would notice. So would we? No, that's a good, that's a good start. Yeah. That's, that's what we've done on two occasions yeah. so far. Mr. Chairman, to uh, okay. Ms. Kalitska, will there be a mailing that goes out for this public hearing at, for the next hearing for the PUD on this? To, to the residents? For the Man public hearing, will there be a mailing to within 300 or 500 feet? Yeah. Yes. Everybody that lives within, is it 300 or 500 feet? 300 feet. So everyone within 300 feet of these properties will get a written a notice that's, ma that's mailed to your home. Okay, that didn't happen last time. But. No, because because that public hearing hasn't been set yet. We're going to do that tonight. Oh, no. And then I... when we set that date, then that triggers all the advertisements in the newspaper. It triggers the mailings that go out to all those that live within 300 feet. Those mailings only go to within 300 feet. So if you live on the other side of the lake, you won't get a notice. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Kirsten Barber, 441 Newton Drive. Mr. Lamb, you mentioned something about the, um, the lumber yard project. Is that not going forward with development as PUD? Oh, I, I, we're not here to discuss yeah, it. We're, tonight, we're, we're not discussing that right now. This is. The, the I guess I'm just trying to clarify all the different PUDs going around in the village. And he, he referenced it saying that the developer wanted to do this and we told them, you know, whatever, they didn't like it, they were welcome so to leave. I, I understand. And we'll be happy to talk to you after this meeting, but right now we're handling this agenda item, which is the starboard redevelopment. We're trying to move forward, otherwise everybody's gonna be here all night. We wanna get through all this. And I understand that. But, I'd, I'd be happy to meet with you after the meeting briefly and explain to you what happened. But I guess my, my, the, the follow-up question to that is, if the developer of the lumber yard didn't like the ordinances or the regulations that the council presented, they were able to walk away from the deal. So I guess my part of my question is, did they elect to walk away from that deal? And if that is the case, I don't expect it to happen, but should this deal with the Mosheries go through and they don't like the ordinances or the regulations that the council sets forth, I'm not seeing them walking away from this because this is going to be a huge source of revenue for them. But I guess my question is, 
and I've heard it from people directly with the township involved in the planning and development board that places and developers like Mosheri, like Pulte, will come in with this huge, ridiculous, overpopulated presentation. We're going to put 150 apartments in this tiny, you know, 0.8 uh, acre development because we know the council won't approve it, but we'll, we'll, we'll throw some concessions in there and we'll knock it down to 100 and they still get what they want. I guess that's my question. The, the village residents don't want these developments. And I and, understand and your comment about... That's why we have a public hearing. That's not, this is not the place nor the time to have your discussion. At the public hearing, you can voice all these concerns and we're glad to hear them. We too have concerns. So it's not that, we're, it's just, this is not the time and place. Okay, so no one's going to publicly state whether the Lumberyard project is going through or not. I guess I have my answer. There you go. So we really don't have public comment here. This is a meeting that we're setting a public hearing so that you guys can all talk. We took an hour and a half to listen to everybody because you made your time to come down here. Please let us get through our agenda so that we can address all these, get you a date, get you hopefully a place, which is going to be a little difficult because we need a bigger meeting room. I, I'm sure you can agree with that. So we just don't have access to a bigger church um, or, or village hall. So we'll do our best, but please let's get it through our agenda so that we can give you the, that date and time. Um, yes, please. Can, could you please come up, please? I think this location is okay, Lori. Pesci. This location is okay because it's like everybody knows where it's at and it's close. I don't but would think you not agree that there's a lot of people that need, want their voice to be heard? They want to meet with the developer. They want to have their questions answered. I think they need to have that. I don't think this is the right spot for it. But that's the commission will discuss that. Yeah. And I appreciate your input. I just think this is just too small. Yeah. And if they're going to bring in drawings or they're going to bring in models or they're going to bring in whatever they're going to bring in, there's nowhere to put it here. Yeah, that's true. That's so true. I just. It would be nice if he did like a, a presentation, you know, so everybody gets more of the details. That's so I agree. That's, yeah. that's what we're hoping they'll do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're hoping that they'll do that. Okay. All right. Thank, so you. thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. I just need to make a clarification. Sure. Um, in regards, and I do apologize, I cannot attend most city council meetings. We do watch them online, though. Um, this is a public entity and public record posted in the Lake Orion Review. I mean, I did go to Lake Orion, so, you know, I don't think the education was, I mean, it was good, but I'm just saying, if I did miss something in this, but it does state on public record that a public hearing will be held by the Village of Lake Orion Planning Commission on Monday, August 1st, 2022 and today's that date. So that is why these people were here. Um, I don't think it is on um, the, I don't think it's the burden of your village residents to have to come down to City Hall uh, to look up plants. So uh, I think that is something that you guys need to address as elected officials for getting these out. As you move further with more developments in Lake Orion, I am sure that even, uh, even myself, who is a 25 year veteran in this business, um, they're not used to all these developments just coming in like this. We didn't have this years ago. So it's on the burden of you guys as elected officials to make sure that um, our city's doing its job to get this out properly. Now I also want to put on public record that this um, this sale has not gone through yet, so it's not on the burden also of the developers. I will give you that much, um, but it, it is something that you guys need to address with the owners of these properties when you know that they're selling um, to go through that. So I think that is some things that we do need to change in this village, but I just really want to address on public record that you guys did have this out in a public forum by the Lake Orion Review. Uh, that the public hearing was this evening. Um, and definitely let's move to a bigger facility with air. Can, that would be great. Say, can I say something? Sure, please. My name is Michael Lamb. I'm one of the elected village councilmen. 
Next to me is Council President Ken Van Portfleet. He is the elected village councilman. These gentlemen, we don't have any ladies currently, are all volunteers that spend many hours of their free time doing this for free. Okay? As village council people in this village, I've got a thousand hours into my job this year of my own choice. Okay, we're not paid, we're not compensated in any way. Okay, I got some free sausages at a Mosheri presentation last week. That was my gratuity. So please be respectful to these gentlemen when you say what our responsibilities are. The village council staff is very small. They handle all the notifications and publications. We recently, our village manager retired due to major illness. We now have interim manager. Sometime in that process, a public notice was sent out while people were scrambling, uh, people were on vacation in Florida, there was no village manager present. I am so sorry, and I'm going to personally apologize for the staff of the village of Lake Orion. None of the elected officials or the board members were responsible for that notice. It was a mistake by some, at some staff level because the village manager got sick, the staff was on vacation, and a lot of stuff had to get done for all these public hearings and meetings. So please be respectful and understand this. So hopefully that answers why the public hearing was posted. And Mr. Lamb, I do appreciate that. I mean no disrespect. I'm not getting paid here either. And you know what? I didn't even get any Mosheri sausage. So there's that. Um, but I think, I think I would not be running for office if I wasn't aware of that that was my role to do. Um, so I do appreciate that. But this is the roles that you guys have all elected to do. And you, you personally ran for it, were elected, you have volunteered while, well, I appreciate that. I, vol I, I'm, I volunteer for many things across the board, that is my decision to make, but that means that I still have to follow through with the responsibilities of that seat that I volunteered for or I've ran for for public office. So I do appreciate that. I understand that there is no compensation, but I do understand also the rules of public office. So I do appreciate that. But again, um, let's, you just made a very good point for me, is that our village is is not set up to handle any of this. So how are you guys gonna handle larger developments like this? And yes, I'm very aware of um, you know, Joe Young leaving and I, God bless that everything is okay with him. I, I'm, I'm very proficient with everyone in uh, the village offices and they've all been lovely and I know about supply and demand and COVID issues and things like that. It's still no excuse. And so that's why I want us all to be aware that if we can't handle even getting out a public hearing notice correctly, then let's take a minute and let's pause between, you know, again, we're rushing all of these through with development, things like that. Our, our, even our, our rules this evening with, you know, debate going on earlier. Uh, we need to do this right. Uh, and we need to move forward and if the, you know, I'm sorry, I, I still think of this as a little tiny town of Lake Orion. I do appreciate it, but, but let's Curtis. all work better to get the word out. I will do my part, gladly do my part to get the word out for the public hearing and I appreciate it. Again, I just wanted to put on record that nobody came here um, because they couldn't read. They read it correctly. Thank you. Okay. So we move forward with any motions, any further discussions or motions? I believe the motion you're looking for is to set the public hearing for the first planning commission meeting in September. Is there not discussion about the date on that? Because I believe right now it's published as Labor Day, I heard that comment Correct. earlier. Correct, the, fir the first Monday of September is Labor Day, uh, September 5th. So September 6th would be our meeting scheduled be meeting. On September 6th, and that's how it is adopted in your meeting schedule. There are no errors. For the meeting date of September 6th, and to look for additional accommodations to support the request of getting the information out to the public uh, with an earlier start time to be determined as we move along and find an, another venue, if we can. Okay. At 7.30. Pardon? At 
that needs to be part of the motion of time. Thank you. Thank you. Is that your motion? Yes. So Second. Mo moved and supported, uh, but I have some discussion. So are we setting it at 7.30 or are we right. setting it well, earlier? Right, well, the developer has offered to meet two hours early for For questions, for to direct questions to the public. With knowledge to the public. I just would like this to be very clear for everyone who is here that our meeting will start at 7.30, but the developer will be available to talk to anyone, ask any questions two hours prior. Are you okay with that? Whatever time you believe is necessary. Uh, if the meeting's at 7.30. So that would be 5.30. 5.30. Uh, to meet with let's you. Let's say 5 o'clock. Give, give some time for the meeting room to get reset up just in case. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So the public would be noticed that they could come and visit at 5.30, but you'll be here at 5 to set up as well. I'm hearing you, sir. Yeah. Uh, that's fine. Uh, the notice will be sent uh, from the, the township clerk, is that correct? The village and clerk. Village clerk, thank you. Thanks for clarifying that. Village clerk. And we'll have a, a sign put up. Is there a standard sign that's typically that goes up in the village for PUDs? I was going to suggest. I don't want to violate anything, make it look like a marketing talk, sign. Talk to the village manager. He okay. would. He would. So we'll make certain that 15 days prior. Uh, to that public hearing date that there'll be a sign on the property or properties, whatever you determine. We have other agenda items, whether they're public hearings or not, but same would occur if necessary. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so is that clear? Everyone understand? Okay, so moved and supported. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, motion carries. <laughs> So September 6th currently, but our meeting will start at 7.30. The developer will be available two hours prior and he will be putting a sign up. If you live within 300 feet of that property, you will receive a written notice in the mail. Um, and that, so we're gonna try to get a larger venue. Okay, so I, I just don't think this would support you know, I, 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 I think people have a lot of questions and they need to get them answered. Um, okay, so uh, Commissioner Cummins. Uh, do you think that this would be a good time at least to ask Mr. Michere a few questions regarding this and what we, we still haven't seen a set of revised uh, dimension plans that we can yeah, read? Yeah, sorry. We, we haven't seen a full, a, a set of dimensioned uh, revised plants that we can actually read. Still can't hear you, sir. Sorry. My question is that we could. I'd like to see a little more information from Mr. Mashiri on a set of revised drawings for this starboard project based on the comments that were sent to him in the previous meeting. I have one page, but I don't have anything that's actually. Uh, very readable with regards to size. So, Mr. Mosheri, in our uh, packet, we received revised uh, Mystic Cove and Constellation Bay, but not starboard uh, yeah. plans. That that's what. That, that's correct because we thought the public hearing is going to be in uh, September. So you'll have a full packet, full size. Um, so you'll have 11 by 17 is your packet. We get a full size. 24 by 36s, if you prefer. Please. I see you shaking the head, so we'll have those provided. Mm -hmm. And electronically also. So the entire packet will be available electronically. Uh, we'll get them to the clerk and or the manager, and they'll distribute it th them to you accordingly. And we'll have full-size uh, plans also. Uh, and if I may ask the consulting planner, uh, when would you like the uh, deadline for that packet? Uh, the week before the 22nd. Okay. No, so no, the 15th, please. We're ready. The only, the only thing we haven't prepared in its entirety are the uh, full life, life scale renderings, and those will be, uh, be done by that time. And uh, we're prepared, and, and again, there was some um, great 
discussion when we were here the first time in regards to uh, building setbacks off of Flint Street, access points, uh, building setback from the water's edge where the docks are, et cetera. So we listened intently and have made those changes. And thank you for those suggestions. Okay, all right. One more question to staff. Since that's a holiday weekend, a lot of us will not, me in particular, I won't be here on Friday, which is when we normally get those packets. It's possible to get that packet on Monday, so I have some time to look at it and review it before the meeting. Monday to what, Jim? That would be... The packets normally, under normal circumstances, go out on Thursday. Will you be here Thursday? Um, the packets are always on the website on, on Thursday. Yeah, so, so you can always, if you're not in town, you can look on them, just going to www.lakeorient.org and go to the board section and you will see the agendas and packets and all the backup information is always there. But if Thursday works, then we could make sure we get them out to Thursday. If I could get a digital copy by the 31st, that would be fine. Okay. That's all I need. Yeah. Thank you. Wednesday, okay. Because you could send me digital too, please. One more administrative. Um, so there was a written correspondence uh, regarding the starboard. Can you have that entered into the record? Yes. All right, thank you. Uh, with that, we'll move on to item 8B. I'm sorry, 8C. I'm did sorry. We, did we uh, vote on that? I believe we just had a motion and support. I we yeah, I thought we voted. Yeah. It was all in favor. It was unanimous. Good. You want to make a motion, you can make a motion. You don't have to make a motion. We'll just, we always include all the letters we receive in our register. Okay, thank you. That's just the standard practice that we do here. All right, thank you. Um, so we'll move on to item 8C, um, Mystic Cove redevelopment and setting the public hearing. <clears throat> Correct. Commissioners, this project, um, the developer has um, stated that they will lower the building height to comply with the minimum ordinance requirement of 36 feet. And as such, no special land use approval consideration would be required. So this project does not require a public hearing any longer. But it does need site plan review, correct? Correct, yes. Yes, it would still require full review by the commission. So if you um, are interested in having it on the same agenda as the other developments for September 6th, then um, we would schedule that on the, the agenda. Okay. So, Mr. Sorry. Chairman, to be clear, this project does not require our special land use any longer? Correct. What is that? Um, if I may, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. Sure. Um, it was never our intent to go above that height limit. It was a error in our drawings, and we'll clear that up. So it was clearly never our intent to even request us a special land use for the Mystic Cove, but we'll fully comply with all ordinances without any variances necessary. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. May I ask a question? Sure. Of the plan, um, what you just described uh, doesn't require any special land use. Does that mean that the project fully conforms to the existing zoning ordinance as proposed? The, the full review has to be done for that development with the revised drawings, but it's only a site plan at that point. So it, it must comply with the standards that the village has adopted. It's not a it's not a special land use anymore. There's no discretionary consideration. So up to so the currently submitted plan meets all of the cur the zoning and legal standards that the village has in our ordinances. It it would need to in order to be considered for approval. So okay, and then we're not required for a public hearing for that. Correct. But it will still be reviewed at a public meeting. Will the public have an opportunity to comment or during this plan review? Always, at any public meeting, just as this evening. Okay, but it won't be a special notice of a public hearing for the other two Mosheri projects. Um, 
No, if the commission was interested, uh, the notice and mailing could indicate that the site plan will be on the agenda as well, though. But, but that's not required by the state. But that would only be to the 300 foot radius of the starboard, not to Mystic Cove, which is the other side of the lake. You could include it as well. Okay, so that could be added to the motion. Yeah, I, I just wanna make sure that all the people watching on TV and, and absolutely know that the other two projects are supposedly going to be fully conforming and don't require anything special and so then we don't have the public hearing, they're just gonna be reviewed like a typical site plan for a typical development. Yes. Accurate? Correct. The, the commission can recommend additional publications or noticing sure. beyond what's the minimum. Okay. Thank you very much. So, Mr. Chair, no action needed on this item tonight. Uh, correct. I do have one comment I'd like to add. Mm -hmm. The there is a traffic impact study that accommodated our information this evening for the Mystic Cove. And I would just like to point out to the developer that there might be consideration of making sure that Flint Street and M24 are considered in that traffic study. Um, of course, it's Mystic Cove, but I'm thinking still the council would be nice to know. I, I, would, I would agree. I think I think Flint Street and M24 is a major intersection. Mm -hmm. There was uh, traffic studies done for all three developments in, independent of each other, then cumulative, looking at the total impacts. Right. So uh, our engineers will coordinate with your consulting planner. And is it your engineer or the consulting planner that reviews your traffic studies? Who? Engineer. 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 And we'll go to your engineering, uh, Carol Thurber. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so there's no action that we must uh, need to take on that, so we'll move on to item 8D, which is Constellation Bay uh, plan review and setting a public hearing. Or? This does require a special land use. Okay. Right, is there uh, any discussion amongst uh, commissioners? Well, what is the special land use? The special land use is for the height overlay district. Could you explain that a little more simply for those present who don't know what the zoning ordinance is? So um, the, the ordinance allows for an additional increase in height to four stories, provided that special land use review um, is granted by the commission and village council for that additional story. That's what they are requesting. So this project, this project will require a special land use. Then. Correct. Could According we be in 1903 of the ordinance, correct? And with Article 9 and 10 accordingly. Mr. Chair. Mr. Van Portland. Could we be a little bit more specific and give us feet just for public knowledge? Do you have that? Such as current, maybe 36 feet, special land use would allow what height? The special land use allows uh, four stories. Pull up the height. I believe it's 52 feet is the maximum that can be requested. I have in Article 9.03, I'd like to have that clarified uh, to the developer so that he's aware and that we're aware as well. Um, section 9.03, development standards, item B, Building height may be increased to a maximum of 42 feet subject to special land use is what I Review and approval 
got out of our zoning ordinance today. So I'd like to make sure that that's clear as to what it is. Thank you. Mr. Chair, um, our, our plans are submitted uh, no higher than 42. Uh, whether there's a, a ambiguity in the ordinance, we went with the um, more restrictive, and we took that into account. Uh, and also uh, that if it were the three-story building, it would be at the same height. So we're not increasing the height whether it was three stories or four, it's just whether it has a fourth floor. Um, there are the zoning ordinance for a single family on the water is 30 foot height. And then you see most of the new homes have walked out basements. And then you take the, uh, the joists between there uh, and the uh, homes are approaching 42 feet in height from the waterside lake view. And so we still recognize the need for a special land use approval for the only this, the height. Uh, I shouldn't say the height, it's the floors because the height's indifferent. So we're only talking the floor if you know a living living floor versus the height, height remains constant, uh, whether we're three or four. Um, and there's no, no density change, so we're not asking for a increase in density. It's just a matter of whether the bedroom, master bedroom, faces the water or not. That's the major change between the, the two uh, ideas. But we do have at the end of the buildings, next to the neighbors, we bring it down to three stories. So we're very sensitive to that. So as we went from four or four floors and we go down to three, we bring it down uh, quite a bit. So you'll see that in the full review packet. Uh, we are not seeking no variances whatsoever for Constellation Bay. Uh, we are, we believe we're in conformity with all the ordinances. Your planner will confirm that and you will review it also and be cynical, skeptical, and all those things that you must do and diligent in regards to the, uh, the plan. Uh, but we're quite confident that we're meeting all, all the ordinances, uh, except for the special land use, which is in your ordinance, and would appreciate consideration at that public hearing, and we'll discuss and show those elevations to the public. One thing in regards to getting a fourth floor is that the buildings, uh, the, the, the last floor needs to be set back uh, five feet from the previous floor. We set from the foundation plan to that fourth floor 18 feet. So you'll see in the elevations when we present them, the significant step backs of each floor. So you don't have this flat wall on the water. If it was three floors without the, um, with, without the special land use, there's not that step back um, condition. So we think this is an improvement uh, for this special land use, uh, not a detriment. We believe it's aesthetically an improvement because you step the building back quite a bit, uh, up to 18 feet. Thank you. Chairman, and to the planning consultant, uh, under section 1004, special land use approvals, when the planning commission redid this ordinance some probably 15 years ago, we were very concerned about the properties that lie west of M24, and especially in the MU zone. And when the uh, height overlay district was created, it specifically excluded those properties on the west side. Special land use is required for the height to get that height west of M24. So it it is required and it, and it still has to be done in accordance with section 1903 of the ordinance so that we can protect those sites. It would be the planning commission's, uh, it would be at the planning commission's discretion okay. whether they can go to that height. Commissioner Van Port, please. Um, in table 12.02, yep. which was, is again as part of our schedule of regulations in the zoning ordinance, yep. I believe this is where Mr. Mosheri had mentioned that there's some uh, confusion or um, ambiguity here because it does say mixed use as one of the zoning districts, which that is, the maximum building height is 42 feet. That's correct, subject two. So oh. that's 
a little oh. bit of my Right. right, but it's also when you go to footnote, oh, four-story buildings with the height overlay district may be permitted as defined in the village of Lake Orion zoning map and per the requirements of Article 10, which will take you to what 1004 is. And oh. the word may be required, not shall. And I'm, I apologize, I do not have that footnote in my printout that you may be referencing. <coughs> So a matter, a point of clarification might be needed uh, as want to, to clarify a direction. So that, that does trigger the special land use for the west side of M14 for your consideration and councils. Is it, is it the height or the floors? Is the question, I believe that the developer is asking I'll have to clarify that with the attorney. Okay. For this evening, I would, I would schedule the special land use as it would relate to both then. When we did that, I believe that it was done both for the number of stories, stories and the height. And the height, the intent. So that we could vary that height along uh, the west side of M24 along the lake so that we didn't get something that was totally out of character with the rest of the village along the uh, west side of 24, which would be the east side of the lake. Okay. All right, is there any discussion, any motions? Do we want to set a public hearing with the other public hearing because this is a sole single issue topic? My feeling would be yes, because then someone's making one trip and they can talk to the developer about whichever project. We can get answers done. It'll probably be a long meeting, but I think doing it in one meeting rather than multiple meetings would be more beneficial to everyone. So now I'll move to set the public hearing for the, the same uh, time and date following the uh, marina project name starboard starboard uh, support uh, public hearing. Okay. moved and supported but i do have some discussion do we would we want to include the same parameters as we are with the other developments that residents within that 300 foot radius is also absolutely uh, being absolutely. notified 100 um we would ask the developer to put a sign up yes i'll amend my motion to include those items thank you um, okay, motion is moved and supported as amended. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. So that too will be September 6th. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Okay, we will move on to item uh, 8E, which is McKenna's planning and zoning monthly report. Oh, sorry, Commissioner Van Portland. I'd like to make a motion. Thank you, thank you, everybody, for attending. To receive and file. Second. Okay. Move and supported. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, do we have any old business? No. Thank you, Ms. Curtis, we still have a meeting. Thank you. We'll move on to commissioner's comments. Uh, we want to start with that. Yeah. Ed. Any comments? Uh, no, great turnout. It's a lot of, lot of feedback here, good stuff. So I think just something that you know stuck with me today quite a bit, obviously with all the comments, was just general communication. And I know we spoke about that quite a bit. I know it was an honest error on behalf of the staff. I know nobody had any ill intent for the public hearing or not. Um, but I do think it's important for, you know, especially a property like we're discussing here with these three projects. Obviously it's gonna affect the homeowners that live close to that area, the two, 300 feet that we're sending out, but it's, it affects that entire lake. So I do think whether it's, you know, we talked about boards on the, the boards in the village hall, open house, email, mail, website, signage up front, newspaper. I don't know why we don't look at doing it all. 
I mean, for, for a project this big that's going to have this much involvement, uh, rightfully so, you know, it should just be everywhere for everybody to have at least an understanding of what's taking place in this community. So that's, that's my take for the communication. I agree about the communication, great comments. And I want to thank everyone for coming. It was really important to me to have all of the input from as many people that could come tonight. Look forward to the September 6th meeting. And I would like to just throw out there a consideration to our administrative staff. There is a building not too far from us, which is the Methodist Church. They have a community hall on one side. Uh, quite possibly they could accommodate us and we might look into that as being an, an option. I'm going to try the school board building for... Yeah, I think we... A yeah, that's a good building. one, too. And when we were re renovating Village Hall here, we had all our meetings up at the school board, so I'm going to call them first thing tomorrow. Yeah. It's I, not I, much bigger than this building. I, I don't agree with that. The fellowship hall? Or the no, the, the school administration building oh, is not, yeah. it's it's not any bigger than this. So do we have cable uh, concerns with having the meeting cable cast it? Because if we just go to some arbitrary building, then we, you know, disenfranchise all those people that would be watching. Well, the school board building would has cable. Just, um, I understand, but, but she's saying uh, it's Methodist not. Methodist Church not. probably would, could be an issue. Um, we don't know, sir. They until could, we... might be able to come in and take it and replay it, but there wouldn't be that live participation. Mm -hmm. On TV, I'm sure, would be led and bring in I'm, I agree. I, I mean, that, that is, yeah, sure. If it can be done. So, yeah. If it can be done. Right, so they, they would need to be contacted also. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Lamb, comments? Oh, yeah. Mr. Stevens, would you like me to comment on the petition drive? Would you like me to comment on the petition drive? Um, other than I have already. <laughs> okay, so I, uh, Mr. Stevens, I assisted Mr. Stevens uh, this weekend, and we completed a petition drive. Uh, it's been brought to council and the community's attention that all of these new development projects, all of the tax revenues, probably in excess of $500,000, will all go into the uh, coffers of the downtown development district uh, without any modifications. So this date, um, we have not got any input from the DDA in this direction. Uh, we have not gotten any direction from the village council in this direction, other they formed a committee recently after many requests. So we have, um, Mr. Stevens has promulgated a petition uh, calling for the um, repeal of the TIF plan for the Downtown Development Authority. We have approximately 350 registered voter signatures. And what this uh, indeed would do in the November election, it would allow the voters the opportunity to tell the Downtown Development Authority that they would like the tax dollars from all of the new developments and from the residential districts to go into the Village General Fund so that we can use it to pay for some of this stuff around here that we don't have money for. Mr. Lamb, I'd like to amend your statement to a degree. Sure. This is the intent to drive to the Village Council who has control of the entire set of circumstances for the DDA to move forward to do what is appropriate that the community wants to do. It is not the DDA. The DDA is a, an appointed board, just as the Planning Commission is, just as the Zoning Board is. The only hired people are those who are elected. The hired is the wrong word, excuse me. But the Village Council hires the administration, the clerk, the treasurer, the village manager, the only people that have the authority to do anything are the elected officials, and that is the village council. Up till now, this has not been moved forward in any appropriate fashion, and so I consequently decided to run a petition to put this on the ballot following the rules of democracy to let the people make decisions about what should be going on. I'm not sure that the petition 
if it does get to the ballot, will actually have the power to do it. But I think it would be a very strong word to the village council, who has the power to do these things, to do what the public wants. That's basically my statement. I would like to, as a point of clarification, um, just inform the general public that there has been some direction made. There has been a committee appointed with the DDA board of three members and an alternate, and a committee that has been created of three members of village council with an alternate with their goal to communicate to each other and look for an alternative solution within the DDA and the village council to assist the community in a, uh, their endeavors going forward at a different level. Yeah. So though that meeting has not taken place yet, but there has been some activity. It's not just been uh, ignored. I am not suggesting that it has been not right. ignored. Right. I, I, want, I know you're not, sir, but I just want to make it as a point of clarification. Absolutely. But we there need has been. to move forward in whatever project is going on with this right. and in order to make it into the field of where we, the citizens, have a say-so in that as we elect you, the officials, we should have also the say-so as to how our tax dollars are spent. Right. This was initiated in 1985, and it is continuing, and it will go till the year 2039. That's a lot of years of taxation capture. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it was really good to see everybody turn out today, and I make an invitation to come join us every month. You know, most of the time those seats are all empty back there, and we can always, we always value your input, so thank you. Yes, I think, it, I think it was a testament to the community and its willingness to come out and protect what we have here in the village currently. I'm very glad to see, and as Mr. Laurent says, these meetings are open to the public every month. I would advise you get involved. So th thank you again. I, I want you to know we're here because we cherish our community we live in also. I can't tell you how many concerns I have. And I'll just mention a couple because these are the ones that haven't really, you guys had all these the uh, comments and you didn't bring them up, but we've been looking at them. And a traffic study is huge. And the traffic study that they provided on an arbitrary Thursday in June, arbitrary Thursday in June, sorry for the mic drop, doesn't cut it with me. That's one day um, when the kids are out of school. So don't think we don't look at this, we do. Basically, I mean, and I live on the lake. I, they, la they left, but I, I dive the lake, so I know exactly what they're talking about. Um, we have those same concerns, and that's why I volunteer my time to be here, is to be the voice of my neighbors who came up and spoke, because if we don't protect it, nobody will, and we get it, and we thank you for that. But I want you to know that whatever looks of impropriety that there may have been over whatever was completely that, it was a mistake. Um, and all I can do is sit here and say, I don't know how it happened, because I don't. And I don't find out what's happening in the real estate market and what, who's gonna be buying property and who's gonna be doing that. I don't, I have a, I have a job, and I go to that job and take care of my family. Um, so, I appreciate it. I hope you all can make time on the 6th. We're gonna make time to be there at the meeting. Um, we got a lot of questions, a lot of questions to be answered about artist renderings to site plans to docks. Docks mean hoists. Docks could be boathouses. Um, you know, there could be a lot of boats on the lake. And I go out on the lake in my boat. 
and I hear every one of your concerns, I'm making those same concerns. And I'm making the same call to the sheriff department or finding his boat out there and tell him, hey, why don't you wake up and see what's going on? So thank you very much. Um, hopefully we can address a lot of these issues at our next meeting. Um, so we'll move on. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to the next uh, scheduled planning commission meeting, which is uh, Tuesday, September 6, 2022. The meetings at 7:30. The planner or the uh, developers that he meet prior to that. Um, we will have to get as much notice out, and Facebook's probably great. Um, get it out there, and where our meeting will be. We're not trying to hide anything. I just don't think this is going to suffi uh, suffice. Uh, we barely got, we have people out in the hallways and outside. Um, so with that, uh, move to adjourn. So move. Okay. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, meeting's adjourned. Thank you. That's it. <laughs>